I'll call to order the July 31st meeting of the Historic Landmarks Commission. The first item on the agenda is public comment. Any member of the public may address the Historic Landmarks Commission for up to two minutes for any item that is not on our agenda today. Seeing no public comment, I will close it and move on to approval of the minutes of the Historic Landmarks Commission meeting of July 17th. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Motion by Lavoie, second by Sharp. Under discussion, any additions, corrections, or clarifications on the minutes? Anyone? No. Okay. Then all in favor of the minutes as submitted? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is the consent calendar. Ms. Gantz. Yes, Mr. Chair. Item A at 222 East Carrillo Street was project design approval and final approval as submitted. Item B, 1601 State Street, uh, was final approval as submitted. Uh, item C okay. at 1118 East Cabrillo Boulevard was project design approval and final approval as submitted. And 9 West Victoria Street was uh, final approval as submitted of a review after final. And those were reviewed by uh, Commissioner Sharp. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Sharp, for doing the consent calendar. I'll do I have a motion to ratify the consent it's calendar. Moved. Motion by Winnick, second by Drury. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is item D, announcements. Requests by applicants for continuances or withdrawals. Ms. Gantz. Uh, Mr. Chair, Commissioners Boucher and Murray will be absent from today's meeting. Commissioner Arias will arrive late. Uh, Chair Suiting will be stepping down from items 1 and 2 at 209 East Islay Street, item 8 at 35 State Street, and item 9, uh, and then actually item 9 at, at 902 Chapala Street has been uh, postponed two weeks at the applicant's request. So item 6 has been postponed? I'm sorry, item 6, yes. 902 Chapala? Yep. Okay. Oh, okay. Have you alerted the applicants to for item seven to appear early? Um, no, because I think the um, there are a couple items I think probably will go a little bit longer. So you think so? I think it'll be fine. All right, uh -huh. we just we just may have a half hour break. Uh, all right, uh, any other announcements, commissioners? Commissioner Schomburg, Winnick. Mm -mm. Nope. Okay, subcommittee reports. Any subcommittee reports? Mm -mm. Then we will move on to our first item. We um, actually need to take a three minute break because we cannot hear an item 10 minutes before its time, or more than 10 minutes before its time. So we are in recess. Uh, Pamela Post, uh, one of the authors of the Historic Structure Sites Report for 209 East Easley Street, Post Hazeltine Associates. Tim Hazeltine, Post Hazeltine Associates. Peter Kamenzen, homeowner. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sharpsley. Nicole, please. I did review the report and support the report's conclusions that the house and the fireplace do not meet the city of Santa Barbara's significance criteria due to the alterations that have happened to the house. Um, however, the project does meet state CEQA guidelines of the MEA in that the low sandstone wall surrounding the property does qualify as a structure of merit. And that was my finding of the report. Okay, thank you. Does any member of the commission have a question? My understanding is the report makes the same conclusion about the retaining wall. Yes. <laughs> Mr. DeForest, public comment, please. Yes, Callum DeForest. Uh, on page six, I just wanted to point out. Uh, where it's, where it sets one of the structures at 205 East Disley. Uh, well, there's only one structure at 205 East Disley. What I wanted to point out that both 
the structure at 205 East Sisley and the sort of matching one that faces Santa Barbara Street are both uh, Sewell and Murphy design houses. They were built, built as spec houses after the property was sold. Other is on page 35, the 10-4 analyst analysis of the proposed project. So the question is, what is the proposed project? Uh, how can the report analyze, analyze a proposed project when the proposed project is not included in the report? Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public wish to speak at this time? I'll close the public hearing. Does anyone want to answer Mr. DeForest's question? Yeah, at, at this stage, there's not there's not a specific proposed project other than the owner uh, owners intend to build a single family residence, but there's there are no plans for it. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Any member of the commission have any uh, comments? Mr. Chair? Mr. Drury. I, I think the thrust of the report is basically that the thing has been so hodgepodge up to about 1986 that there's really no um, consistent architectural style. Would you like us to answer that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. In a sense, yes. There have been so many changes, particularly uh, in uh, 19, I believe it was in 1986 when they actually recited the whole house with uh, the existing shingles that you see now. Uh, earlier, of course, there was a second story added. There was additions made to the back. Uh, windows changed. Now, so yeah, and for, you know, vast amount of alterations. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments? Mr. Chair? Mr. Hoboy. Um, another excellent report. Thank oh. you. Oh. Thank um, you. And um, thank the applicant for going through this process before he decides to do something new um, on the site. It was very prudent of you. Um, I've, I used to spend summers in this neighborhood sitting a house for a lady um, who's no longer with us years ago. Um, and she always pointed to this house and said, there was some very interesting wallpaper in there. And so it was interesting reading your story about their involvement in the wallpaper industry. Um, so as you begin to rummage through this house, you might be very careful about finding some of that and maybe preserving some of it um, for the historical society. Um, I, 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 this is only conjecture, so it's not based on anything but hearsay, <laughs> neighborhood hearsay. Um, there, it, it's one of those houses where I can see the original house, but I accept the amount of change that's happened over history. But there's still some really marvelous detailing that, that survives, like the gutter rafter detail is really kind of marvelous um, and pretty rare. Um, that um, I can accept the report very comfortably because of the analysis provided to us. But there are some things that if you're going to build a craftsman house on this site, um, which would be appropriate, um, that you emulate some of the detailing that, that might have survived from the original house um, in both its, actually it it's, has a unique position on the site as I remember. So um, if there's no other comments, I'd move to accept the report as written. Is there a second? Second, second by Drury. Motion by Lavoie to accept the report. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very Court much. Accepted. <clears throat> the second item on today's agenda <clears throat> is a miscellaneous action item, which uh, includes the proposed demolition of the 3,817-square-foot single-family dwelling. Ms. Mr. Gant. Mr. Chair and uh, commissioners, it's actually to, this particular item is to 
uh, it's a request by staff to add the sandstone retaining wall to the city's potential historic resources. Oh, I see. Okay. From the last time. From the last time. Yeah, I, I get it. Yes. Once um, when I read the report and it noted the sandstone wall to be significant, I suggest that they go ahead and send in their Correct. approval to add the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, public comment. I'll open the uh, <clears throat> to public comment, Mr. DeForest. The walls have been there since the site was first developed, so and definitely worthy of preservation. And, and as Commissioner Lavoy, is there are elements that should be considered? I would like to know whether by uh, make, making this, putting this on the potential list, these walls on the potential list, will mean that the structure, the proposed structure comes to this body for review? Yes, it does. The whole property is now under the HLC review with, with the wall being just put on the potential slip. So the new properties, will come, the design review will be here <coughs> at the HLC. Thank you, I don't want one of those. I would not want one of those ready-built metal houses that like on Pedro Grosso Street that was plunked down, so I'm pleased that this body will get to review the pro project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeForest. Anyone else in the public wishing to direct, address this? Okay, close the public comment. Are there any questions from the commission? No. Is there a motion? Mr. Chair? Mr. Lavoy. Um, based on the report just accepted by the commission, um, request that staff add the sandstone retaining wall to the city of Santa Barbara potential historic resources list on this property. Is there a second? Second by Schallenberger. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And we are, again, 15 minutes ahead of schedule, so we will take a five-minute break. <laughs> Discussion item, item number three. Uh, it's a Gutierrez Street bridge replacement. If you would please introduce yourselves for the record and give us a brief presentation. Hello, my name is Jim Colton. I am a bridge project manager with the city of. Oh, did I turn it off? Better start over. My name is Jim Colton. I'm the bridge project manager for the city of Santa Barbara's uh, Public Works Department. Uh, my name is Craig Drake. I'm a principal engineer with Drake Haglin and Associates. We are the uh, designer of the Gutierrez Street Bridge Replacement Project. Okay. Uh, today we're here to present yeah. the. Can you um, flip that around the other way. I will do that. Today we're here to present the Gutierrez uh, Bridge Replacement Project. Uh, we're very early in the design stages of this project, so we're here to uh, introduce it and solicit comments from the um, commission. Um, uh, the Gutierrez Bridge Project is part of a bigger project, larger project, that's why I brought this, this display. Uh, this is the Lower Mission Creek Project, uh, of which Gutierrez is an uh, integral part of it, located about midway down. Um, the Lower Mission Creek Project is a um, project that was developed with, in cooperation with the Army Corps of Engineers and the County of Santa Barbara and the City of Santa Barbara. Um, there was a 2001 EIS EIR um, approved for this project, but the Cateras Bridge uh, in that document was to remain in place. <clears throat> so we're early in the design process, we're early in the environmental process. Um, so we would appreciate receiving any comments we can from this body at this time. 
Uh, funding for this project uh, is from F, primarily from FHWA. They're funding 88 and almost 88 and a half percent of the project, with the city carrying 11 and a half. Um, the capacity of this whole creek has been designed to increase. Right now, it's about an eight-year capacity. Mm -hmm. They're going to increase it to a 20-year capacity. So one of the constraints, why we introduced this is the, one of the constraints is this Army Corps project coming in later on where we, they're going to be changing the channel configurations upstream and downstream. So um, that's Mr. Drake is here to uh, discuss the project constraints further of the bridge. Um, with that, I, I'll hand sure. it over to Craig and you can take it from there. <coughs> okay, as Jim was saying, this this... This uh, this is a uh, a, blid a bridge replacement project. Even though it is in the within the footprint of the county and the Army Corps flood control project, as Jim said, there is no. Uh, this was not envisioned to be replaced in the environmental documents that were prepared for the flood control project. So this project will have its own environmental document prepared for the replacement of this bridge. Uh, it, incidentally, this bridge is, is eligible for replacement because it's been determined to be uh, size, uh, structurally deficient and therefore needs to be replaced and it's being replaced with highway, uh, uh, highway funds, federal highway funds. So uh, that's kind of the background of the project, even though it is in the, and, and so what I'd like to do is finish with this, with this board and just go to the package that the, uh, that the commission has been looking at. And as Jim said, we've we're coming in early. We haven't we haven't really done any uh, design work on the project yet. We've had a couple of project development meetings with uh, internal meetings with the city, the interested agencies, and we had a, uh, a public uh, kind of an outreach meeting last night uh, to solicit input from the residents. Uh, we're, 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 our, our goal is to get everybody's comments in early enough that we can actually do something in the design to affect the design of the bridge rather than try to mold something later after we've already set pen to paper. So uh, I just wanted to get everybody familiar with the site. You know, it's over there on Gutierrez Street, just uh, just off of Chapala, between Chapala and De La Vina. Um, right now it's, the, the width up top is somewhat narrow for a for a street bridge there's no on-street parking on this part of Gutierrez you can see the on-street parking coming later um, so one of the questions would be how wide does the new bridge need to be um, the funding source being highway federal highway uh, funding uh, has some minimums that have to be respected with regard to bridge width on the top um, down below uh, as Jim mentioned the flood control project is, a, is another constraint that we have and we have to deal with uh, there's a volume of water that has to move through here. They're going to be, the, the, what I say they, I mean the flood control project, is going to be increasing the, uh, basically the, the width of the creek above and below the, uh, the site. And right now, the way their modeling works, we have a bridge that has vertical walls, and then on either side you have a laid back channel. And so there's going to be some significant you know, pickup in water velocities as it goes through the bridge site. And that, Present some challenges in and of itself uh, for engineering the foundations and whatnot. So we're going to be doing kind of a balancing act with how long do, you know, when I say length, I mean how long do we make the bridge? In other words, how wide do we make the creek in here? Um, it, it's delicate because if we go too wide, or I mean too long of a bridge, we start needing more structure depth and then that'll affect some of the driveways that you see here that are on the corners of the bridge. Uh, if you try to raise the the grade of, of Gutierrez Street, it's going to impact some properties and some driveway access issues. It'll also change the drainage patterns out there. So that's uh, probably the primary uh, constraint that we have. Um, other constraints deal uh, mostly with utilities that are out there. Uh, there's some overhead, significant overhead utilities approaching the bridge from the west. Uh, after it gets across the bridge, it, uh, it goes underground. And so these utilities will need to be dealt with uh, along with uh, the design, how to, how to deal with relocating these so that they can construct the bridge. Some of the, some of the similar issues that come up on all, the, all of your bridge replacement projects. And probably the final one that the, uh, 
that the commission here is interested in is, is the selection of the bridge rail at railing itself. Um, you know, we have to uh, put a railing on the bridge that can redirect the vehicle, an errant vehicle, and so those rails tend to be rather heavy, and I know we worked with the commission on the Chapala Street rail, and we took the standard railings that are used on these bridges, and we engineered it down to what we, uh, we feel is a minimum you know, width of railing that we can, that we can uh, justify putting out here. So we would probably be doing something similar on this bridge. But as I said, we're, we're here to solicit comments from the commission and uh, hopefully uh, get some idea of what direction would be good to go in for the replacement of the bridge. Anything else, Jim? I think you covered it. Thank you. Okay. And I will open public comment. And seeing no speaker slips, I'll close public comment, bring it to the commission for questions. Commissioner Jury, do you have any questions? I, I, would, um, I guess my question would be is the width of the bridge would be driven, I would say, mostly by um, weather events as opposed to uh, through traffic because there's not a lot. So you're talking about the width on the, on, on the yeah, deck? The, on, uh, let me just say can you make sure your microphone is turned on? Is it, is I, never, I never know. <laughs> when when you uh, off, so yeah. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So do you mean the plan, uh, the width here in this? Yeah. Just the gen the general yeah, construction of the bridge would be based. But I mean, you're doing it because not only is it deteriorating, but you want to prepare for a. Weather event, some somewhere down the line. Yeah, there's there's two two things there. If we're looking at the plan view of the deck itself, the this is what the bridge engineer would call the width, width right. and then the other one would be the length. We understand. Um, the width of the bridge, and I and I should have mentioned this. The sidewalks do not line up. If you look at this picture right here, uh, the sidewalk needs to line up here. It needs to. Well, that's what we're trying to determine, and that. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, I, mean, I mean, let me let me put it this way: it doesn't need to. You're answering his questions. So. But yeah, it is. It is kind of an answer to the question. There are some uh, elements or some some city departments that would like to see that sidewalk match up. Mm. Um, there are other thoughts about leaving it the way it is and, and making it as narrow as possible. And so these are the kind of things that we need to to work through as as a group to try and come to the conclusion of. Which which bridge width would be most appropriate for Santa Barbara? Mm -hmm. For for the place that the bridge is right. being. Okay, yeah. thank you. Now the other the, now the other question you said about the storm event has more to do with the length of the bridge and the and dealing with the flow of the water underneath. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Sharp. Any questions? What is the minimum width the feds will allow? Right. Uh, it's primarily. Uh, the feds are only concerned about the distance in between the curbs, the traveled way. For this bridge, the minimum uh, is, depending on ADT, probably about 22 to 24 feet. I'd have to check on what the traffic, latest traffic counts are, and that would be for a two-lane bridge, mm -hmm. traffic in each mm -hmm. direction. Okay, thank you. Mr. Lavoie, any questions? Yeah, could I see the, the, um, the other board, the hard board? Sure. Up here. So this is not a bike path that I'm hoping for. <laughs> Correct. If you want to go through a tunnel, maybe. <laughs> well, that's why I was wondering why it was just sort of ending right there. Um, okay, that yeah. that is the that is the proposed rechanneling. This is yeah. This is the uh, underground uh, box Un culvert. Underground. Yes. Right. I that's by the transit. This, that's the by, this is the bypass oh, 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 culvert oh, oh. that goes, the bypass is the, the I dog remember leg that. there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it is a bypass, not a re right. right. There's a portion of it that's already constructed. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm right. remembering. Yeah, this is where they put the weir here, and, and only when it gets to high flows would it go through the. Okay. The Dumb question, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Commissioner Winnick, questions? Uh, no questions, but just to remind you that we have a letter. I speaker. think that was for the other one, wasn't it? For oh. the Mason Street one? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, I'm is sorry. It? Yeah, yeah. It, is. You're, you, it says Mission Creek, but... Uh, let me read the MST number. Um, well, there is no MST number for our discussion item today, so... It, but it doesn't line up yeah. with the Mason Street number either. 
Actually, yeah. that that letter you're talking about the letter yeah. Yeah. submitted. Mm -hmm. um, it could apply to all it, it really projects could, you're in right. general, <laughs> but it does. He does mention one MST, which is um, your last item today. Okay, sorry. Mason. Mason. Creek one. Great. The last okay. Creek right. item. Done. Okay. Um, Commissioner uh, Schallenberger, any um, questions? Just, what is your timeline for? going through the process as far as uh, when are we going to see design reviews, submittals? Uh, right now, the, the goal is to get this into construction in uh, 2016. So we would be coming back to the commission with some hard details. I think we're hoping to be back here in about three to four months with some concepts to look at. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we would come back for the for the further reviews before the construction. Okay. Can I start? Um, can I ask a question? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, can we go back to sure. the sure. other sheet? You can take that one off. Um, I guess the first question I have is: Have have you reviewed the minutes from and the comments and the design that came out of our comments for the other bridges, specifically Mason Street Bridge? Um, Chapala Street Bridge, you, you, you've looked at those minutes, so you kind of know what our ilk is and where we're coming from. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I would strongly suggest that, sure. that you do sure. review those. Um, the second question is, um, does the sidewalk have to be attached to the road deck? Uh, could there, in other words, could there be a yeah. separate bridge? Uh, there, there, there could be, but it would not be funded by the highway bridge program, okay. because that funds vehicular bridges. And so there would be no funding available from the Highway Trust Fund, you know, to do a separate pet bridge. Okay, because, you know, you mentioned that some of the powers that be are looking for a straight sidewalk sure. through there. And um, if that's the case, you can see that the bridge gets much, much wider, right? Um, which we would not be able to support. Okay. So, it, you know, I, I'm hoping that we can have a, a, a jog in that, and mm -hmm. I, I'm... I'm, I'm asking you to push for that job okay. to keep the bridge width now. Okay, Mr. Schallenberger, if you want to start. Only because I have to go in an emergency on my project. Have to get that too. Better not involve my building. <laughs> um, so the width thing, I think you already got. Just some going forward, in, in, I, would, on. I would say, well, maybe the power is Glean from those most recent reviews, the good and the bad. Um, I would say the good from Mason Street was the presentation quality of drawings, I think was pretty good in terms of some of the in interior elevations, looking at the slope of the, of the landscaping. They did some nice things there. David Black, I think, was the architect there. Um, one of the things that they failed to do, I think, and needs to be corrected on on this and future bridge projects is an overlay of the existing over the proposed yeah. clear delineation of what the existing bridge looks like and also cross sections in both width and longitude length with width and length um, and just a real the, you, you mentioned the, the the other side of the box covered by the train station one of the things that wasn't done well there was there wasn't really a good presentation of what it was going to look like. You know, in other words, just an elevation view of what is that, what is that going to look like? And eventually we got there, but the process could have been shortened greatly with some architectural elevation type of drawings versus that one was very engineering heavy. There was grade point elevate, you know, all these this engineering data on the drawing that really didn't have anything to do with the impact on the historic resource and like I say, what's it going to look like? That phrase, I would keep that in mind going forward. And also, um, any landscape, how, 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 any of this, how this bridge would be treated from a landscape perspective. I mean, I sort of mentioned that earlier, but the sidewalk as, as we're going forward. It, I'm just concerned with what happened at Mason Street Bridge where we're going to have a lot of cardscape 
from rail to rail uh, on the street level. Not, you know, down in the in the creek, I think they treated that completely appropriately. But uh, at the street level, it's just that this wash of, of concrete and asphalt. Uh, it's it's not it's not appropriate to the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Winnick. Uh, not a lot to add other than in those discussions. Also, a lot of comments were made about the railings along the bridge, so you're probably aware of that. But again, I think there's lots of precedent between the, I think it's been three bridge projects that I've sat through at this point. Yeah. Commissioner Lavoie? Uh, well, thank you for coming in early, <laughs> rather than when it's yeah. all done. Um, our, our, our concerns have always been, uh, we'd like the bridge as narrow from side to side as you can make it and get funding for it. Okay, this is a neighborhood bridge, not a freeway <laughs> bridge. Um, and it, it probably doesn't concern us that, that the walkway jogs. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not like a right angle turn. Um, the, the, the length of the bridge is probably not a concern to us as long as it's kept as narrow. So the length is determined by creek bed and all kinds of other things that we have no control over. So we accept whatever length you tell us it is. Um, and um, we like to see as much of the existing vegetation around the bridge area to be either maintained or restored, um, appropriately restored as this is going forward. Um, and um, for the design of the bridge rail, I, I would say, the, in, in this, in my opinion, the Mason Street Bridge rail is probably the least successful one we have come through. Um, there are any number of other bridge rail designs um, that have been accepted by Caltrans and, and everybody else along the way um, that are much more appropriate uh, for Santa Barbara. And you can just use one of those if you want to, actually. <laughs> Okay. Commissioner Sharp. Thank you. I uh, agree with the comments, and they're pretty. Most of them are pretty obvious. I would like to have the camera zero in on the Holy <coughs> Street Bridge, the which in street? The very sorry. center of the project, uh, the photograph here, and oh, the, the Haley yeah. Street Bridge, right. which is uh, a massive concrete in all directions. Uh, in my belief, unnecessary. Mm -hmm. uh, and anything you can do, and we begged for this on the Mason Street garage, uh, Bridge, mm -hmm. not to have a situation like that occur. It ruined that immediate neighborhood. It looks like something anywhere but Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Commissioner Drury. I would agree with the previous comments, I, and I would like to know, um, or, or perhaps suggest, that an inventory be taken of what exists in the creek now in terms of in terms of what's living there, okay. and then um, we'll have an idea of how to improve it. That'll be part of the environmental yes, impact yes. report there. Um, I will just reiterate to um, maintain or um, preserve the existing vegetation to the extent possible, particularly mature vegetation and vegetation that is large and that acts as um, shade and shadow or shadowing for the creek um, because that, that is a beneficial habitat um, characteristic or benefic beneficial characteristic for habitat. So um, that's extremely important. Um, I am going to summarize the comments then, and this is not a, a motion item, so if anybody has anything to add to these comments, please let me know. Um, thank you for coming in early. Uh, show all landscape treatment, maintain the existing landscape, provide shadow for the creek bed, minimize the width of the paving slash hardscape at the road sidewalk level within applicable funding restraints. Future presentations should have clear sections, elevations, overlay of existing versus proposed, etc. HLC does not support the straightening of the existing sidewalk if it increases bridge width. 
The bridge rail design is very important. Look at the Chapala Street rail and the Ortega Street rail, Ortega Bridge rail. So look at the Chapala Bridge rails and the Ortega Bridge rails. Um, the uh, HLC would be interested in um, reviewing the EIR or having a look at the EIR as well. Anybody have anything to I add? I do have Did one additional Did comment. Architects normally go out of their way to meander sidewalks in projects. So certainly that would be a real asset to this. Transportation engineers, however. Yes. <laughs> Where did he go? Oh, there he is. <laughs> so why don't, we, why, don't we, why don't we add the, um, Don's comment, too, about not emulating what's happened at the corner of Haley. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, De La Vina. Yeah. Uh, that, that won't yeah that, that's, a, that's a creek through an intersection. Yeah, do, that's do, what do, they always say. Do not emulate <laughs> the um, conditions at the Haley De La Vina Street intersection. <laughs> So. Chair, and um, let, uh, let me just finish with the uh, commissioner's comments first. Commissioner Lavoie. Um, under maintain existing landscaping, would you add maintain slash restore? Okay. Maintain slash restore existing landscape? Mm -hmm. Okay. If Ms. You, Kennedy. If you could reword your environmental um, comment, so there won't be an EIR on this project, most likely not. Okay. So, what will um, it be? Initial study okay. or. Uh, the, the commission is interested in reviewing the, initi the environmental documents. documents. There you go. That the works. commission is interested analysis. Yeah. in reviewing the environmental analysis document. Yeah. Okay. Whatever that may be. Okay. You have enough comments? All That's right. A good start. Yeah. Good. Bye bye. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You can take this. That's important. Okay. Thanks for coffee. Might need them again. <laughs> you want one? Okay. If the next applicant for item number four wants to come up to the table, we have a uh, two minute delay, but come up and get set up. We're both, oh, it's like today. Yeah. I'm really disappointed. I'm really disappointed. You're not wearing ruffles and your chapstick shoes. <laughs> we are in recess until 2.15. Don't you have tango shoes? You buy any tango shoes? We just can't hear an item more than 15 minutes before. <laughs> this one is back. size actually for me. <laughs> I'm good with this size. We can't lose anybody though because well, I think Craig is coming back. Oh right? yes. Oh, yeah. Well actually, the way he we left lose. his stuff it looks like he is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well he that's none of his personal stuff though. No, I guess that's true. All right. Ruffles in red. <laughs> and a sombrero? No. Castanets? What's wrong with my set? Cheer up. Cheer up. No? no not going to happen? Okay. Yeah, let's turn. Cheer up. Uh -oh. 30 more seconds. Ooh, 29. I know that the winds of the board regarding Haley Realty, but if anybody got over there and walked around and see those, those piles that were made, mm -hmm. you know, it's unfortunately nice. only the people live in the neighborhood know them, but we got, there were 50 kids that participated in an art project, mm -hmm. and they actually 
made um, hand painted um, tiles hmm. that are in the sidewalk there, uh -huh. all with creek themes with frogs uh -huh. and plants and water uh -huh. and whatever. So. It's a nice touch, but. No. Okay, we will reconvene, and the uh, next item is item number four, the zero block of West Mason Street. This is final review. This requires compliance with City Council Resolution 01-137. Project was last reviewed on February 13th, 2013. Do I have those uh, minutes? No? Okay. Well, you, do you have Chair Sitting, you could borrow mine. Uh, can can yes. I trust these? <laughs> yes. I, I printed out directly from the city website. Okay, just teasing you. All right. Um, project design. Yes. I'll read from this one since okay. it's just the official. Okay. The majority support the proposed horizontal metal railing in a painted finish or wood finish. Provide a sample of the faux sandstone wall well in advance of the installation. Resolve the joining of the two fence styles. There is concern with traffic on the bridge and the effect of the livability of the neighborhood. Provide detailing of the spacing for the planting of the larger landscape material. Provide detailing for the varying of the horizontal rail spacings on the bridge rail. Provide detailing of the placement of the streetlight fixture on Kimberly Avenue to be out of view of the Mason Street State Street style fixtures. And that was a motion made by Winnick, second by Boucher. Motion carried. Okay, please introduce yourselves for the record and give us a brief presentation. Thank you, Chair Suiting, members of the commission. My name is John E. Lawson with the City Public Works Department. Welcome. I'm David Black, landscape architect. Welcome. Thank you. Oh, can I start? Uh, sure, I'll start. Uh, Chair Suiting, members of the commission, uh, the City Public Works Department is requesting final design approval for the Mason Street Bridge replacement project. We plan on going through each agenda item, or excuse me, motion items from the last February 13th meeting. With that, I'd like to turn the presentation over to David Black, who will be responding to motion items one to three um, at this time. Excuse me. Thank you. Um, let's see, I'd like to start with, um, with this exhibit, which is essentially gives uh, an overview of the site um, and the geometry as was approved um, and design approval is reflected here um, obviously Mason Street Kimberly Avenue um, here's the bridge the bridge railings up uh, downstream and upstream um, these are the proposed um, faux sandstone creek walls um, the expanded habitat planted zones um, and and that's it as far as the layout is concerned. I would point out um, that, at least at this stage, that um, for purposes of the light standards, because I know that was one of the comments, um, there will only be two at this, uh, the Kimberly and Mason Street intersection. There will be one here and one here. Both of them will be the State Street style. Okay. Okay. Okay, so that being said, the last time we were here, the majority of the commission supported the horizontal metal railings in, in, a, in a painted uh, finish. Um, I know there was some discussion about the relative sizes of the, the horizontal members and the spacing. Um, we've come up with several different alternatives, but this is the preferred alternative. This is the one we're showing you now. Um, we have others, but, um, but it does provide some variation in um, the size of the members and as you can see some slight variation in the spacing obviously there's consideration for um, structural strength crash tests all that sort of thing and then i don't know if we presented it the last time but um, we found that there is a um, a structural need to have uh, a precast or a cast in place um, pilaster at either end of the bridge railings i'm sure you understand that so um, that's, this is what's being proposed. Now, in terms of the finish, um, we had discussed last time a painted or wood finish, and what we've done is found a vendor that actually has, this is actually a metal coating with sort of a uh, modeled 
uh, patina. So it can be essentially sprayed on, painted on. This is a steel uh, sample here. Um, I think it's quite handsome, actually. And, and uh, the nice thing is it's a metal coating, little or no maintenance, unlike a painted surface. And um, I, I think it'd be, uh, it might be a good choice. So we're presenting it for your uh, consideration. OK. Two of those are the same. Okay. Okay. And there's another one that's more brown, but I think this is the one or that's the one. Okay. Um, we do have some other alternatives, more having to do with the uh, the horizontal uh, members, but um, this is the preferred at the top. I mean, you're certainly welcome to look at these others. If you see something you prefer, but um, we felt like this this presented itself much nicer. Okay, moving on. Um, the discussion around the the faux sandstone wall. Now, some weeks ago, um, the city and county flood control um, hired Robert Hill, who's a faux stone artist. He actually worked on the Reach 1A portion of uh, Mission, Lower Mission Creek to come down and construct a, um, a sample panel um, in the city yard over on Yananali. Um, this was the end product of that. Um, I will say, when we came out of this, um, we felt like there could be some refinement in terms of the texture. And I think the city is considering having him come down again, not to do a whole new sample, but just at least maybe do, these were done with, um, with latex mats on stone. And, uh, and then they were pressed into this wet shotcrete. Shotcrete, of course, is the, is the material to be used uh, in the construction of all these creek walls. And um, so I think that Mr. Hill may or may not come back down again, but we're looking to refine this. And, and I will point out to the commission that if, in fact, that's the case, um, that the city, I know, would entertain a subcommittee or any members of the commission that wanted to come down prior to the installation of this work um, to review the, any, any sort of final finishes that uh, that uh, we may end up using. So this is sort of a first pass at it, but we wanted to share this with you today. Okay. Everybody see this? Yeah, I passed it around. Okay. The next item on the comments. Well, there was some. There was some comment, I guess, about resolving the, the joining of the two fence styles. Now, as you may or may not remember, um, this is the style that's being proposed for this project. This is what was used at Reach 1A, the one down downstream at State Street. And, and just, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Sure. But where is that occurring in the oh. plan? Well, I'm just going to show, you you show it there, yeah. Yeah. It's on top of all the uh, proposed walls. Okay. In here. Now, um, I believe another item you'll be reviewing today is the uh, county flood controls um, reach 1B. Um, the same uh, fence style is proposed for that project as well. Now, 2B is, uh, is an, uh, a section upstream of that that will interface with the Chipala, proposed Chapala Street project, as you're probably aware. That has its own um, fence style. Um, for purposes of this project, this is the fencing that we're using. Again, the adjacent um, reach is using the same one. So I think the question of how the two fence styles would interface, if in fact they ever physically do, is an issue that I think should be brought up You know, when, when that part of it, of the creek work, um, is brought before you. Okay. So but for purposes of this, this project, this this interfaces with Reach 1A. It's the same one, and then upstream, and then and then uh, 1B. So I think that would sort of address the issue. Um, fourth comment had to do with um, it says there is concern with traffic on the bridge and the effect on the livability of the neighborhood. Uh, um, John has a um, some comments uh, responding to that to, to that issue. I can respond to that. Thank you, David. Uh, Chair Suiting, members of the commission, uh, 
City Public Works Department staff uh, read the motion item number four. Uh, we interpreted it as uh, a general feeling, comment, or concern uh, as a consensus of the, uh, the commission. Uh, just for your information, we did do a stop sign analysis for the intersection, and that was prepared by Derek Bailey, our supervising traffic, or excuse me, our supervising transportation engineer. Uh, a copy of that sign analysis was distributed or, uh, at the same time to the commission, and I hope that the commission did read the. Uh, the recommendations of the warrant in that sign analysis. Uh, so that's what we interpreted this motion item if that was a concern of the commission. If there was anything else that you could clarify at this time, uh, staff is uh, ready to hear that from you. Um, actually, the sixth comment had um, to do with the detailing of the varying Horizontal rail spacings, which I think we've addressed that. in that number one. Um, oh, there was a com there was a comment about um, provide detailing of the spacing for the planting of the larger landscape material. We've actually prepared complete landscape plans. Okay. We've sort of, a, you know, sort of taken all that into consideration. We've actually worked with Creeks Council. The spacing, the way the drawing has been prepared. Um, we're not drawing individual plants, but we are. This is the, the palette of material that we've worked out with Creeks Division. Um, Creeks worked out uh, quantities, and then there would be a rest uh, during construction. There would be a restoration specialist on site, and they would be responsible for ultimately um, locating the, uh, the, the final spacing. But that's the intent. And so this is the upstream. And the downstream expanded habitat zone here, the um, five specimen uh, sycamores that are being proposed on the Romasana property on the west side. Um, so, um, you know, all the all the material, all the uh, the native riparian material, will be one gallon of the all contract grown, um, except for the. Uh, the specimen sycamores, and then we've got 24-inch box. I believe there's stenocarpus as the street tree, a couple up on the, up on Mason itself. Okay, and there's we've got well, it's in here, but irrigation plans are part of that. Um, backfill preventer will be located in this area. Will be screened with shrubs. Um, be drip irrigation throughout. Um, I take that back. There's going to be ro uh, rotator heads along here, throwing down onto the slope. For, for the sloped areas. Okay. And then the seventh comment had to do with the placement of the street fixture, which we've addressed. Yeah. We've already addressed, yeah. And I would point out too, just as a hardscape detail, um, the Mason Street uh, brick paving will come to here. There'll be colored concrete at the uh, at the ADA ramp, uh, this is on the north side, and then on the downstream side, it comes down to here and terminates with a with a crossing there. There's one of the lights, and the other one's across the street. Um, and I think those are that's our presentation as it addresses the, the comments you made at the last uh, the last meeting. Okay. Um, does staff have any comments? Yeah. No. Um, I'll open public comment. I have one speaker slip from Mr. Kellum DeForest. Mr. DeForest. Oh, can I make one more? Sorry. Uh, hold on one second, Mr. DeForest. I'm closing public comment, tabling it. I apologize. Mr. Black. We have these lovely renderings that we wanted to share. Because they cost a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, they do. So, um, so they're just varying views. This is essentially what it looks like. You can see that... that uh, sandstone is carried under the bridge throughout. The view on Mason. Okay. Some oblique views. Expect the water to be that blue, huh? <laughs> the right food coloring. Surprised me too. The right amount of coloring. <laughs> Sorry. 
All right. Okay. okay. Is that it? Conclude your presentation? No oozing No. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I'll open public comment and go to Mr. DeForest. Mr. DeForest. Thank you. I am one of those pilaster signs at the ends of the bridge seem new. I don't recall seeing that particular design before. And I was wondering if they could be uh, of stone or both stone uh, pilasters uh, similar to those on the Mission Creek, historic Mission Creek Bridge. This would give it a historic, make these bridge look more historic and fit better into the EPB guidelines, I think. Thank you, Mr. DeForest. I'm also acknowledging a written letter from Ms. Paula Westbury in opposition, as well as a letter from Ed Harris, Eddie Harris, um, suggesting that the uh, creek uh, side, uh, um, the creek sides be uh, pl heavily uh, planted and provide shade for um, the environment, the habitat. Um, I will close public comment, bring it to the commission. We'll start with Commissioner Winnick. Any questions? Uh, yes, my question I think relates to the um, two questions. First would be on the sandstone images that you showed us, the five sandstone. And my question is, is what is the image that they're working from that they're trying to, or <laughs> what are they trying to match? What, what is the <laughs> reference? Uh, yes. Mr. Chair, I, um, well, I think it's trying to match the historic sandstone walls that are currently in the creek. So. Okay. And was the artist working on situ, or did he have stone samples? I'm just kind of curious as to how the process works. Well, to be honest, when he came down to the samples, he brought his own sort of prefabricated mats. Um, since the time that this was constructed, uh, we've had discussions about Actually, the, the city happens to have these big, flat, cut pieces of sandstone uh, in their city yard, mm -hmm. and there's been some discussion around actually taking impressions off of those pieces. Great. Um, but that's all that's happened, discussions? Okay. Today. Okay. okay. Well, I know we're not in the comment period, but I would support that, that direction, because that's essentially what I was trying to elicit. My second question is relative to the, and thanks for doing all these studies of the railing and sharing them. A lot of times people say, yeah, I studied that, but then they don't show you. They just show you the preferred and move on. So the one question I have is on some of the alternates, in some of the cases I see more spacing where there's more white space between the rails. And I guess I'm kind of curious what led to the choice on the preferred, which primarily has pretty tight spacing. Most of the rails show two-inch spread between the, um, the horizontal numbers. You know, I'm going to defer. I, I can give you my mini package. Mm -hmm. I'm going to defer to Tom Conti, who's with okay. Bengal Engineering, the design engineer. So sure, you could probably address the approach that they took. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, you know, I, I really just played with the size of the members, and I, I almost tried to make it. Um, when you look at it, an optical illusion as to um, the, the spacing in the members and relative to the spacing of the, you know, between the two members. So, you know, <clears throat> as you can see, there's various alternates that were that were created, um, you know, and, and of course the guideline of four inches no bigger than four inches. So, you know, I really just uh, just played with the spacing and, and to try and uh, to make it a nice, varying, uh, aesthetically appealing um, bridge rail. That's, okay. that's pretty much it. Great. Thank you. Commissioner Arias. Yes. Um, question about regarding the removal <clears throat> of tags. The material that you showed us um, and the fox uh, stone walls and things like that, how, how are you going to protect it and make sure that tagging is removed? Uh, to answer your question, I know that that metal coating Where it should be. Can I see that metal? Yeah. Capable, is capable of, of having a, uh, um, a graffiti. Um, you mean a power wash? Well, it's a, it, it could be, um, there is a sealant that could be put on it to, to make the removal of graffiti easier. I mean, I know that from the manufacturer that that's possible. Does it make it shiny? Uh -huh. You know, I haven't seen uh, the product. Unfortunately, but. when you put the sealant on it and you use things like goof off, et cetera, to remove this 
the graffiti, then the sealant also eventually comes off. So it becomes a, um, a, a solution that does not last. And I just wondered if you are making it available for power washing or something like that to make sure that we don't get that problem. And I speak as an experienced remover <laughs> um, for I, 15 I, years. <laughs> I, I think that subject could probably be um, I would researched a little to, bit more. I would and, ask you to research it sure. and, and also to make sure that there are provisions for it to be removed because it's a beautiful design and the landscaping is wonderful and I know those are comments, but yes. I know what graffiti can do. I, I, I would suggest that we'll optimize any opportunity Thank we you. have. Sure. Commissioner LaVoy? Questions? Uh, yeah, uh, what's the function of these? Hmm. Design engineer. <laughs> there you go. Good for you. You're talking about the, the pilasters? Yeah. yeah. Well, because it's a steel rail, um, it, it's an impact cushion in case a car was to impact the. Think about if the, if the, yeah, that's if the rail was impacted. Yeah, it would basically be um, sardine. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why they're there. And that's not. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Commissioner uh, Sharp? No question. Commissioner Drury? Yeah, I just want to uh, ask probably an obvious question. I think all these this, all these rail designs are they have to uh, adhere to certain is a natu national <coughs> national transportation federal highway federal highway authority. standards. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Question. Um, if we could go to the renderings for a minute. Okay. Those beautiful renderings. In the renderings, you're showing that there's um, a bit that maybe not the best one, but that there's a, that there is a, a cant or that there is a, a bow to the bridge rails. Is that in actuality going to have to happen? And how do you address that with um, this material that is being proposed? You can't bend that. It's it's actually a very slight. Bow, um, you're right that because this this rendering is made from a 3D model, so right. that you're absolutely right. There is there is a slight camber, but it's so slight that it, that it's not going to be an issue to the point of uh, constructing the rail. It can be done. Okay, you're sure about that. Okay. Uh, um, then the oh, second question I have, Mr. Black, would you consider? Um, using a variety of sizes for the um, platinus for the sycamore. In other words, maybe mixing um, some percentage of them, um, 15 gallon and uh, a, a smaller percentage of them, 24 inch box, just so that we can have some variation um, right off the bat. Would that be under consideration? Absolutely. Um, I know that 15 gallon do, you know, better, smaller does better usually in the natives, but in this case, we want to try and throw some shade onto the creek bed as quickly as possible. Um, yeah, absolutely. The, 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 the only consideration that we, we, we can't forget, though, is that all this has to be contract grown. So our experience is that most contract um, grown material in terms of sycamores, let's say. The I thought you said the sycamores um, were not going to be contract grown. No, just, just the ones on the Romasana property, the which, Roma we, in, which yeah. we anticipate that those are going to be specimens. But anything within the, sort of the, the creek itself has to be contract um, grown. Now, if, they, if the city were to enter into a contract to start growing them now, um, you know, there's a, there's a good chance they could be easily 24-inch boxes. I mean, if you look at the ones that were planted at Haley de la Vina, now, sorry, um, you know, they're probably 12, 14 feet tall now, okay. so, okay. yes. Okay. Commissioner Drury? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I have, I'm a terrible mathematician. I don't add up it well at all, but I was trying to add these numbers for the roadway and adding all the numbers along and coming up with less than 49 so I, would you please just help me out? So the overall width is 49.6. You yes. have 8 foot 6 plus 7 foot 6. That's 15 foot 6 plus 11 is 27 6 plus another, was that 11 or 13? 11. So where are we at? 27. So we're at um, 38. Well, the 49.6 is from face of... Rail yeah, to face of rail. 38 plus mm. 3 is 41 plus another 6. Yeah. Doesn't that 47. Up? Yeah, I get 47, 6. 
Yeah, I just added it's six yeah. feet, 32 feet, and eight six. And, and anyway, that's yeah, the three ounces. Uh, we would be yeah, interested in knowing what the what the what the rail to rail width is too. The, the outside width is 49 and a half feet. Outside. Oh, outside. So we're not outside. taking into account the one foot wide railings. That's correct. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Um, the last question I had. Sorry, I forgot. Um, mm. Can these pilasters be um, larger than what you're showing? You're showing them at about one foot nine on the cap, so I'm guessing they're about one foot six or so. Sure. Okay, there you go, one foot yeah. six. I mean, if 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 we uh, if the rest of the commission wants to keep entertaining those pilasters, can they be bigger? Yeah, two foot maybe. Just feels like they easier. Enough. Okay. Sure. So I'll start with comments then. Commissioner um, Drury, any comments? Come back to me, please. Commissioner Sharp? Comments. Come back to me also. <laughs> Just took down this. Uh, Commissioner Lavoie, any comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you for the renderings. They really help see what it really is going to look like in context. Um, the, 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 the problem we're having with the faux sandstone is it looks like faux adobe. <laughs> And that Too was loud. the problem we had. Um, uh, yeah. uh, that, that's the problem we had with the last sample. Um, and you know, there's enough sandstone in Santa Barbara that, that one could at least take something off of it, if not a visual impression about what sandstone looks like, to come up with a better sample. And if this is your only vendor, then you need to find a different vendor. And you need to sort of like tell them, if, you, if this is the best you can do, then you're not our guy, even though you are the lowest bidder. Please. Because it, it looks like Adobe. And it's going to look worse as it ages, because it's going to age faster than stone. Um, I, I missed the discussion about the rail, so I'm not really going to comment too much about the rail. Um, I, I understand why, where the suggestion came from. Um, and the, the, the one I prefer is the simplest one, the last one with the greatest amount of opening. Um, but, 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 but I think hurts it more than helps it are the ball finials, mm -hmm. that I much prefer either the simple cap of uh, yes. T2 and or a very simple pyramidal cap so the rain washes off. Oh, okay. uh, you know, the, the, it, it's, you can find the examples at Home Depot. Um, there's a, just a very simple pyramid. Um, the, the piers, I understand why. Good idea. Um, they, they're, they're either the wrong material or the wrong design. Just a very simple stone pier. Or you know, or a faux stone pier would be fine. Very much like the hitching posts that are around town. No cap. No, no cap. No cap. No, just okay. a simple, you know, and the, and the hardly the, any the, detailing. Yeah, the the the, the, yeah. the hitching posts that are around town, yeah, up yeah, and down yeah, State yeah, Street, yeah. just a bigger one, so that it'll stop a car. But that very simple design okay. will work, I think, better with everything else going on and sort of the rusticity, implied rusticity. Of, of this railing as opposed to the others um, around town. Um, that's it. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to start doing shorthand because I can't keep up. Commissioner Rias. Yes. Um, I um, appreciate getting the information about traffic warrants. I was disappointed that it took over two months to get it, but I appreciate finally getting it. With reading it, I went on a little trip around my neighborhood and all, and I found all sorts of stop signs exactly like what we had requested for here uh, in existence. Um, Veronica Springs, Torino Drive, uh, uh, Modoc Road, and the Coomer on-ramp, et cetera, et cetera. And I am disappointed in that this study, this warrants, makes, is so set and lack of flexibility regarding neighborhoods because I know that when neighbor, I'm sorry, did it? No. Um, when neighborhoods are become speedways, it really affects the quality of life and eventually the type of living in that area. 
Um, the other comment I want to make is, I think there are actually two comments. I think the landscaping is very nice, and I think it will be a plus for the creek. I would hope that since you are increasing the capacity of the creek, having spent five years of my life getting the flood map for a Royal Borough Creek in my neighborhood rewritten and knowing how inaccurate the flood maps are, that you take it upon yourself to notify any residents that are within the reduced flood plain that they do not have to pay flood insurance. For a single family house right now, it is over $1,000. And this is money that could stay in the community and support our local merchants. So I think if you are increasing the capacity of the creek, you should also look to notifying residents who are now out of the floodplain. Thank you. Commissioner Winnick. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, again, thanks for the presentation. You guys answered a lot of what we asked before. Um, I'm going to pick up where Commissioner Lavoie uh, led to. And, um, yeah, I think the intention when we were supportive of the horizontal rail concept was to emulate, and I don't know if the photos are handy, but I think it's okay, but it was to kind of emulate the, the style of the bridge railing that was there before, and it's a good rail. And I think one of the, I did, I did this. No, I did. Yeah, I did. One of, the, one of the reasons, one of the things that we were emulating also was the fact that there was visibility into the creek bed through the rail, that it wasn't going to obstruct one's vision. So uh, based on that, that's why I asked that question before about the spacing and you know you're allowed to go up to four inch spacing so it seems to me that that's a benefit. So I, I too as a result of that kind of thinking and also I think simple is better in this case that's the or more or less alternate four um, with the simplified caps as Commissioner Lloyd pointed out and I too also think that given the simplicity of the bridge railing <coughs> A simple stone pier at the end, a la the hitching post, is the right, right, right way to go. Okay. Um, Commissioner um, Drury? Uh, everything add? covered. I agree with the previous okay. comments. Thank Commissioner you. Sharp, anything to add? I also agree with the uh, prior comments. And I, I would like to say to the public works staff that we have for a long time, been asking for the minimum width of this bridge and based on federal standards. <clears throat> and we heard today from an independent civil engineer mention 24 feet. And it's my feeling that we were really never given a factual curb to curb of the minimum that we were striving for. And in the future bridges, I think it's really important that we, uh, we do get the minimum that we asked for. I <clears throat> think the uh, railing number four is uh, less contrived and, and much more straightforward would prefer a four inch distance between horizontals and not three. But uh, other than that, I have no further comments. I didn't get a chance to go out into the light and take a look at the sample, but what I'm noticing in this light is that it seems to be um, getting golder and golder the more I look at it. And it's funny because I had mentioned um, at one point um, about this bridge rail was that um, if we wanted it gold plated, we could gold plate it, but I didn't mean it. <laughs> I really didn't mean it. So I'm sorry for saying that. It was just a joke. And I don't even think it was to anybody in this room. Yeah, this, one's but, white. this one's more gold. I think he probably turned it yeah. over. That's why so um, if, if, if we could, uh, in, if you could indulge the commission, I'll recess for two minutes and have sure. um, some people look at it in the sunlight and, and get a better read on that. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I don't even think I need to recess. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, make my comments. Yeah. Do you want me to go back to the 
It's a different one. That's yeah. a different color. It's a different so one. It's probably a little more gold. Okay. Color. Well, then, since we have less than four commissioners, I need to access. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Good oh, try. I might as well go out there, too. Uh-oh. <laughs> so we are in recess. I think we can manipulate. Any other comments from um, commissioners? Um, I have one that I want to say. So, so that you mentioned, uh, okay, Le Lavoie. Mr. Lavoy mentioned the capping for the uh, columns. Right, and I've you got, got that, that down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, it would be nice if the the colors could match the bridge, so it looks with continuity, if it's possible. Perhaps you can give us a little bit more information, if I might ask, about. I mean, you talked about the hitching posts. I mean, you've got real sandstone, carved sandstone on State Street. You've got the cast ones, too, which are not particularly attractive right. in my view. But so We're, We would be looking for genuine sandstone. Really? Two foot square? square. Yeah. Well, it's a big do you, you, the, you want to get into the foe then? And, and yeah, I think the foe's fine. Well, it's going to have to be the traffic no department. There's sandstone below it. OK. Um, you know, if it does a good enough job, we won't be able to tell the difference. Oh, so this could be far? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's going to have to. It's going to have to be structurally sound. Okay. So you can't make it just out of sand. Sure. Sure. Okay. So um, my comment was. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Before go ahead. we get done, um, uh, one of the browns would be preferred over the orange. Okay. So maybe like a mahogany or, or the a Japanese deep brown. brown. Okay. A little bit of sulfur. With. Yeah. It's, it's really bad. Bad. But it's the paint, so it just smells mm -hmm. long. Okay, then I'm not even going to make those color comments. So, I'm just going to say so, so, excuse me. Yeah. A, a brown in the finish you want, they must have a brown. Okay. So just bring in the sample. And sure. Doable. Okay. Um, so uh, one comment that I wanted to make was to mix, <laughs> mix the sizes of the proposed sycamores to be 25% 24-inch box and 75% 15-gallon and all of them on the neighboring property, 24-inch box, box as stated during your oh, presentation. That's all, 24? He said specimen trees. Yeah, I, well, to, I, re to replace the existing? Uh, on the Romasanto property? Yes. How many? Well, you know, you know what they look like. They're huge. I just thought. Well, that's not on the Romasanto. That's on the creek bank, isn't it? Well, technically, you're right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I just don't think that a sycamore larger than 24-inch box or uh, is, is really going to be that successful. They, my experience is that they're stunted, even sometimes at 24-inch box. But I think I think we can mix them. Okay. Okay. So then I'm going to summarize the comments and look for a motion from one of um, you people on the this side of the table. Um, use actual sandstone to better emulate the faux sandstone being proposed. Consider how graffiti will be removed without the surfaces becoming shiny. Bridge rail alt four sands round finial is preferred, or let's say bridge rail alt four without round finial is preferred. A simple pilaster at the rail ends is preferred. Simple faux sandstone like a hitching post without cap would be appropriate. Landscape is appropriate and appreciated. Mix the sizes of the proposed sycamores to be 25% 24-inch box mm -hmm. and 75% 15-gallon, and all on the neighboring property 24 inch Sure. 25% at 24-inch box and 75% uh, at 15-gallon, and all sycamores on neighboring property to be 24-inch box as stated. And then the last is manipulate the color of the bridge rail, making it more brown. Correction. Yep. I did not mention anything about the surfaces becoming shiny. I asked them to study about the removal of graffiti in the most efficient and sustaining manner is a better way of putting it. Nothing about shiny. Did you state which rail you preferred? 
connected. Oh, yes, yeah, bridge rail alt four with uh, simplification of no finial. Um, take her words. She seems to do a better job of it. I can't hear you. Just. So just the comment about the graffiti is just consider graffiti removal. But they should study how to best remove the graffiti to, to make it effective. Nothing about shiny. Mr. Chair. Mm-hmm. That, that the proposed finish and material be suitable for to enhance or to facilitate graffiti removal. Mr. Chair, Commissioner do, do we need to make uh, in those comments about the um, variation of the sandstone, whatever it happens to be, so it does not look like adobe? I think that was a fairly salient comment. Mm -hmm. Also, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I could say use actual sandstone to better emulate the faux sandstone, bringing it further from an adobe brick look. That works for you. That works work for you. Uh, well, that's I'm not sure about the word anyway. <laughs> use real sandstone as an example for the faux sandstone. Okay, so use real sandstone for an example for the faux sandstone. Period. For all Period. the faux sandstone. Yes. Pilasters, the Everything. wall. Yeah. For all the folks on stuff. Mr. Chair. Yes. <laughs> Back to the finish on the handrail. You mean just the rail, bridge rail? The bridge rails. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned about the finish being too shiny. I am too. And that would be a disaster. Mm -hmm. Same so with I, the I think faux sandstone. Not only the color, but some assurance when you come back to consent for the matte finish yeah. is crucial. Yeah. So um, manipulate the color of the bridge rail, making it more brown. Finish a bridge rail shall be matte finish. Finish a bridge rail and faux sandstone shall be matte finish. Which is another way of saying it shouldn't be shiny. Satin finish. Satin. Okay. Somebody want to make that motion? And what is that motion? What is the motion? I, that's up to the maker oh of the motion. God. And I only summarize the comments. What action do we take? I believe. They were requesting final. All right, Mr. Chair. Conditions? Make a motion for final approval. The details to consent. Actually, be revised drawings to consent. Mm -hmm. so, so somebody wants to. And, and, and actually, you know. This is that case where we're giving approval for drawings that aren't reflecting what we want to see. Which we shouldn't do. Which we shouldn't do. Gotten us in trouble with drawing. Okay. So does somebody want to make another motion? Make a motion for two week continuance. With the comments. With the comments. To full board? To full board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really? Yep. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Lavoie, second by Drury. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. Okay, next item on the agenda is item number three. This is Mission Creek. Yes. This involves Reach 1B to widen the creek channel between Yon and Ollie and Mason Streets and includes the construction of channel walls, expanded habitat zone, riprap, revetments, ornamental fencing, and landscaping. Reconfiguration of parking spaces on 135 Kimberly Avenue is also supposed, is also proposed. Project re requires com planning commission compliance with resolution number 036-08. Project was last reviewed on February 13th, 2013. I'll read the yes. motion from the February 13th. The project is supportable. Coordinate this project with the bridge project known as the Mason Street Bridge Replacement Project, especially with respect to creek vegetation, wall material, and fence material. Provide a landscape plan for the parking lot. Study permeable paving in the parking lot. Provide more sections of the creek on the plans. If possible, provide samples of the faux sandstone wall, excuse me, wall prior to final approval. Resolve the requirements for stormwater management. Strive for graffiti-resistant surfaces. Provide the species and photographs of the trees to be removed. Of the tree to be removed. Provide locations and photographs of light fixtures to be relocated. That motion was made by Winnick and was seconded by Sharp. 
Please introduce yourself for the record and give us a brief presentation. Okay. Thank you, Chair Suiting. My name is John E. Lawson with the City Public Works Department. Matt Griffin uh, with Santa Barbara County Flood Control. Uh, Chair Suiting, uh, members of the Commission, uh, this is a request for final design approval by the City Public Works Department and the County of Santa Barbara Flood Control and Water Conservation District for the Lower Mission Creek Flood Control Reach 1B project. We, are, we would like to go through all the motion items from the last February 13th HLC meeting, starting off with motion item number one. Uh, the city and the county likes to thank you for uh, supporting this project. Uh, going on to number two, coordinating this project with the bridge project known as the Mason Street Bridge Replacement Project. Uh, the county, the city and the county has been jointly uh, coordinating the Mason Street Bridge project plans with the Reach 1B project plans, uh, including uh, the creek vegetation, wall material, and fence material. Uh, motion number three, I'm going to get into the landscape plan for the parking lot. Actually, just for, just for clarification, the landscaping plan or a landscaping plan for the funky property, also known as 135 Kimberly Avenue, uh, landscaping is not per being proposed at this time uh, because uh, the area to be improved doesn't accommodate the amount of uh, landscaping that's uh, that's needed. Uh, we are taking away a substantial amount of impervious services of the parking lot and replacing that impervious surface with an expanded habitat. Uh, zone, uh, also known as uh, vegetated area, uh, next to the 135 Avenue uh, property. And that particular expanded habitat zone is shown on sheet number four. This particular area. Maximize the area of the expanded habitat zone, um, and we need to accommodate access thank you, uh, from one side of the 15 Kimberly Avenue building to the other along the back. Uh, and there's it's such a small area, and there's really uh, no room for for landscaping. Um, and we really wanted to maximize the uh, the expanded habitat landscaping because uh, that's a valuable aspect. Um, that the Creeks Division really wanted to see. Uh, just to add to uh, Matt Griffin's comment, uh, though it, it appears that the expanded habitat zone is just limited to this area, in actuality, the Mason Street Bridge Project does have vegetation on this property here that will be connecting to the county's expanded, hab expanded habitat zone. So in actuality, this vegetated area is going to conform with the Mason Street Bridge Slope Creek vegetation. Going on to motion item number four, uh, the commission uh, requested the city and the county to study the, the possibility of uh, installing or placing permeable paving in the parking lot. Sure. Um, yeah. It's a bit tricky. This isn't county flood control property. This is private property that we are obtaining an easement across. And the agreement that we have reached in concept with the property owner is to um, replace in kind what we touch. 
and that's why um, we're not going with the permeable pavement. We're going with just the standard AC that's there now. Uh, just for the record, the property owner that we are referring to is Alex and Eric Funky of 135 Kimberly Avenue. Uh, motion number number five, provide more sections of the creek on the plants. The county staff has provided more sections as requested of the creek, and you can find that on your sheet number six. I believe this was a request by Commissioner Schallenberger at the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, considering that Mr. Shalom, uh, Commissioner Salmon is not here, uh, we did take uh, notes on what particular concerns he had uh, on the creek section, but we did provide the um, more clarity of what's happening uh, cross-sectional view-wise in the creek. Moving on to number six. Uh, uh, the comment on providing samples of faux sandstone wall. Uh, we are in coordination with the City Public Works Department on creating that, fan, that faux sandstone wall as well. Uh, county staff has been in the audience have, and has heard the comments from the previous uh, agenda item on Mason Street Bridge and we will follow that as well. Uh, coming up with actual sandstone impression mats or using real um, real sandstone to create those mats. Uh, motion number seven, uh, resolve the requirements of stormwater management. Uh, the, pro uh, the project alone is a flood control project. Uh, so the amount of area that we can touch to mitigate any stormwater pollution is really on the 135 Avenue uh, property. Uh, with that, the, the property is being substantially reduced in impervious services, and at the same time, increasing the pervious surface through the expanded habitat zone vegetation. Item number eight, strive for graffiti resistant services. Gentlemen, if I can interrupt. Sure. Uh, also point out that the stormwater management BMPs are also being tied in connected to the Mason Street Bridge uh, campus. Thank you, Matt. Uh, number eight, strive for graffiti resistant services. Um, it is the understanding by the city that the county uh, policy is n not to put or coat any of the flood control walls with uh, any type of anti-graffiti coating. Uh, the reason being is uh, they do have security measures in place as well as uh, obligation to maintain the surfaces of the channel walls. So they do have periodic uh, maintenance where they check the channel wall and if there's problems with graffiti, uh, they, um, they immediately remove that. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll add some stuff here too. Um, th this work is very similar to REACH 1A1 um, and we haven't had any graffiti issues on REACH 1A1. Uh, and while if someone really wanted to tag uh, these walls, they can. Uh, we feel that there are, uh, there are going to be obstacles to do that. This is in the estuary uh, limits. So there's going to be standing water year round. Um, there's going to be a security fence at the top of the project. Um, we normally do not apply these anti-graffiti coatings, especially in creeks. They're just going to get washed away. Uh, we are obligated uh, to remove this graffiti, any graffiti that comes up. Um, and so uh, you know, we'll address it as it develops. Uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, moving on to uh, motion on number nine, provide the species and photographs of this tree to be removed. The plans before you identify the trees to be removed. So Mark more than one now. More than, one? Right, more than one. Um, Page. Please two. refer to sheet number two. Uh, the trees to be removed. The trees to be removed are color coded green and marked X on sheet number two. 
Uh, photographs of these trees can be shown on the next page on sheet three. Um, the relation between two and three, uh, uh, in sheet number two, they do have uh, the, the coding numbers as photo one, photo two, photo three, and photo four, respectively. Number one, number two, number three, number four. So these are the ones in red that are being removed as part of the Mason Street project. Uh, uh, yes, Commissioner Chair. Uh, uh, Chair Sudi. Okay. Where's the photo of the jacaranda? I'm sorry to be asking questions. Oh, yeah. I need to deal with this now while we're in it. Uh, yes. You can see it in photo number four. It's not uh, labeled, but it's in the middle of the building. Okay, uh, moving on to number 10 provide locations and photographs of light fixtures to be relocated. Again, uh, please refer to sheet number two. We have identified uh, in, with this symbol, the typical light symbol of the street light, or excuse me, the uh, light fixtures on site. Refer to sheet nine of nine uh, photographs of the site. Uh, you, you'll see the light fixtures on here. Actually, the light fixtures, yeah. John, you can see on on sheet three again. Okay. Uh, thank you, Matt. Sheet three. Number three. Are you all finished? Uh, yes, Chair Suiting, uh, Members of the Commission, we're, this concludes our presentation. Okay, staff have any comments? Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. I think the, when you mentioned Eddie Harris's letter, you yeah. mentioned that on the last item. I'm going to mention item. on this one too. Is that okay? I thought it was, all, I thought it was for this project. It is, but it kind of applies to all of them. Oh, okay. So all right. Thanks. I'm going to mention this one too. All right, I'll open public comment. I have no speaker slips, but I am acknowledging a written letter from Ms. Paula Westbury in opposition. Also acknowledging a letter from Eddie Harris uh, from the Urban Creeks Council. The expanded habitat zones are essential elements. Um, be sure to uh, shade the creek to provide the uh, quality of habitat. Um, removal of non-native ornamentals um, is good. Uh, the lack of commitment in providing essential natural creek vegetation in this reach does not engender confidence that current and future work will achieve desired success results. These aspects of a flood control project are of great importance. Everybody's read the letter. I'll close public comment. Bring it to the commission for questions. Commissioner Drury. I have no questions. Commissioner Sharp. No questions. Commissioner Lavoie. Um, yeah, one. Um, I'm having a logic problem. Um, if, if you remove paving and you replace it with permeable paving, I don't see where that's not a one-for-one. One. I, I can't see why you can't replace 
paving, with permeable paving. It gives the owner a paved surface. I, we can talk to our real property people. Uh, that is the agreement that we reach with the property owner. Specifically, you're talking about this area here? Yes, where, where paving is being removed. It would, it, it would be, if, if you were a private developer, you should be required to do it. Okay. No other questions. Commissioner Arias, any questions? I agree completely with uh, Commissioner Leroy. And if you do not put in a permeable pavement, then how are you going to deal with pollution coming off that pavement and going into the creek? Uh, are there going to be some sort of oil and retention basin or something like that off the the water is being directed to Kimberly Avenue, and that water uh, immediately goes into a, a catch basin, which is then directed into uh, the habitat zone. So there's no way of, I mean, I know in pro other projects we require them to have um, a, 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 a basin or some form of catching the Tree. pollution from the cars. And that, that is what I would expect to see from this. But I agree completely with Commissioner Lavoie about the permeable pavement. Any more questions, Commissioner? No. Chris? Excuse me, Commissioner Winnick, while we're on that subject. So you're telling me that, and that the water from the um, pavement, from the asphalt, um, from the parking lot, is channeled out onto Kimberly and then through a drop inlet or a catch basin and, and then filtered through the vegetation enhancement or the riparian enhancement? Yes. Area. Yes. How, how, how can you do that when it's the, the vegetation enhancement site is off site? You have, uh, you have to provide your stormwater treatment on site. Well, there was a comment about coordinating projects, and so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We, we looked at it as a, a combination and a coordination of projects. That's not what we meant. <laughs> All right. Uh, Commissioner Winnick. I don't have anything to ask. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a few questions. Did we review this handicap ramp last time? Uh, I don't yes, recall it, we did. Uh, it, was was it was there. there? Yeah. Was it there? I don't remember. It was there. I haven't talked about it this time. No, they didn't talk about it this time. Um, Ms. Gantz, could you, could you look and see, or do you want me to, one of the commissioners, Commissioner Jury, could you look on that and see if there was a handicap ramp that on the old we reviewed? Um, the next question I have is on the sections, which is on page six. Um, does this wall need to be, on section BB, does this wall need to be that high above the existing sidewalk and then a 42 inch steel fence on top of that? Or can the overall height be 42 inch without the um, wall being that far above the sidewalk? Uh, okay. I believe the height of the, the top of wall elevation is set. Um, okay, why and is then, it so far above the existing sidewalk? Uh, it's, why is it so high above the existing sidewalk? Chair Suiting, uh, members of commission, uh, that particular, uh, the reason why this block wall is uh, is is uh, this height, uh, it's for flood control purposes. It provides that uh, free board to prevent, uh, theoretically prevent water from overtopping onto the existing sidewalk. And that is uh, consistent with the Mason Street Got bridge it. wall. Okay, so then the 42 inch high steel ornamental fence doesn't need to be 42 inches tall. You, you need is an overall 42 inch tall guardrail. Uh, in right. this case, we can look at that. Okay. Uh, although for Mason Street Bridge, which we're connecting to, I believe that wall is gonna be relatively wide on top. So someone could easily step up onto the wall. Oh, well, um, <laughs> okay, we've gotta draw the line somewhere. Uh, um, no, we can look you, at that. You, you, you don't have to provide a 42 inch guardrail on a surface that's only four inches or eight inches wide. Okay. Um, there's. Uh, okay, let me ask my next question sure. then. Um, what, what, what's the purpose of this planting pipe that you're showing in this section, BB? It's so that the, the tree can grow through the riprap that underlies the soil that's placed on top of it. And who's designed that planting pipe detail? Uh, we worked with that with our biologists, our staff biologists. And it's also um, a requirement of the IR EIS. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, hmm. that's a good reaction to that. Um, do you know what the, do you do you know how big um, Salix Lassio lepis gets? Do you know how big a royal willow gets? Uh, I do not, but I can find out. I, okay. I, I, um, do you realize do you realize that you're showing it like less than ten feet apart on your proposed um, expanded habitat? And a royal willows get to be 20, 30 feet apart. So you need to really look at your spacing of your expanded habitat proposed planting. This this does not pass for a um, landscape. I, I believe it's in conformance with the uh, California Coastal Commission approved landscape plan, which is uh, uh, which was done by David Black and also. Uh, in I doubt Mr. Black would have shown Salix last year left us at 10 feet on center, but okay. Well, we'll we'll research it. Yeah, I mean, basically, what show, this is a comment, but basically what you're showing me here is that the um, rest of the planting that is around the Salix last year left us is not even going to survive because the Salix, Salix last year left us is just going to crowd out all of that other material. I guarantee that. All right. Um, any comments, Commissioner Winnick? Um, no, I don't really. Uh, let me ask um, did Commissioner um, uh, Jury, did we review a... Um, yes, yes. Okay, we did. Very good. Mm. Okay. Commissioner Rios, any comments? Well, my comment again, which is that residents in the floodplain should be notified if there is a reduction of the flooding so that they can eliminate paying flood insurance if necessary. Okay. Commissioner Lavoie? I don't know where to start now. Um, the, the, the project needs to be consistent with the city's own regulations for stormwater runoff and should be exemplary of them. Um, We should be seeing a landscape plan prepared by a licensed landscape architect. And he should be responsible for what's being presented. The design of the handicap ramp is not acceptable. Um, I, 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 I share the, the skepticism of the uh, planter sleeve, the trees, uh, I, you know, planting pipe. The planting pipe, that's an interesting idea. Um, you know, sycamore trees get to be pretty fat over the years. How big a pipe are you going to put in? Uh, I believe it's a 24 inch, I, but I can, I can look at my engineering drawings. What, what happens? I mean, that's not my area of expertise, but I'm just skeptical about about it. Anything else? No, that's all. Uh, Commissioner Sharp. I agree with those comments, and don't have any further. Okay. Commissioner uh, Jury. Same for me. Mr. Chair? Yes, Commissioner, yes. One further comment. I remember questioning the size of the boulders to make sure that they will not be washed down the creek. In other words, they've got to be massive enough that they can withstand the water flow, which will be pretty fast at that location. Mr. Chair. Okay, let me um, ask the applicant to um, respond to that. Do you have any information on that? Yeah, they've been engineered. The size, um, I don't know if they're shown on your plans. They are uh, shown, two to three feet in diameter. Whether that's large enough, that's the question. I don't know. I, I remember seeing them down. going up at the, uh, by the mission during the fire, mm -hmm. and they were, they were three feet boulders that were moving down that creek. Right. And anything that moves down is going to have to be re pulled out and taken care of at, at, at expense. So it's good to plan ahead and try and avoid this. I do have a question. Okay, Commissioner Degree. Um, would these, would these um, boulders be keyed in? 
Uh, they're buried halfway. Um, it's shown on the cross section. Right. Yeah, they're keyed right. in. Yeah. Keyed in to the, the existing stream bed? In, in, into the existing ground, yes. Okay. Then my comment would be they, they should be keyed in deeper and they should be bigger. They should be what? Hmm? They should be what? Keyed in deeper and they should be bigger. The point of clarification, they're shown as three to four foot diameter boulders, not okay. two to three. Any other comments? All right, so I will summarize and look for a motion then. Um, the project needs to be consistent with the city's stormwater management plan. Excuse me, project needs to be consistent and exemplary with respect to the city's stormwater management plan. Requirements. Requirements. Stormwater management plan requirements. Landscape plan should be prepared by a licensed landscape architect. Licensed landscape architect should be present at the presentation. The design of the proposed ADA ramp is not, access, is not acceptable. The biologist or landscape architect should provide an ex explanation of how the planting pipe for the sycamores is to function. Check the height of the guardrail on the raised wall above the sidewalk on page 6, section BB. The size of the boulders does not seem large enough to prevent washing away. Boulders should be keyed in to the creek bottom. Anything else? So I have a motion from somebody? Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, uh, actually, not acceptable per the aesthetic guidelines of the HLC. Uh, the so the design of the ADA ramp is not acceptable per the guidelines of the Historic Landmarks Commission. Yes. Thank you. Two weeks? Do you want two weeks or indefinite? Uh, indefinite. Okay. Make a motion for indefinite continuance with those comments. Second. Okay, motion by Lavoie, second by Sharp. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. You understand the motion? Great. Okay, we'll keep this one since there's some markings on it. Steve, you can have this up. Next item on the agenda is a review after final for 33 East Cannon Perdido Street. Can you take this one? Thank you. Sure. Which one is this? 33 East Camperdita Street. Libero. No, they're here. Oh, thanks. Yes, yeah, six get canceled. Or rescheduled. Are those different than the drawings you submitted? Nothing substantially different. There was a lamp missing on the elevation. You'll have to um, fill staff in on what the changes yeah. were. Yeah. Sounds more like the correction. Honestly? <sighs> yeah. Oops, going that way. Yeah. Okay. Mini set or sure, I'll, I'll go with the mini. I'll go with the mini. We can share one mini. You know what you've got for over there. Thanks. Yeah, it's the same thing I just brought. Okay, if you could uh, please introduce yourselves for the record and give us a brief presentation. Yeah, you see the whole story right here. I'll turn that one on. Big button, there you go. Contrary to popular belief, that is not a whip. Uh, Matt Gridius, KBZ Architects. Well, welcome. Okay. What is your um, project today? We're here to present um, after final approval for uh, removal of intermediate handrails at the uh, Canon Perdido Monumental Stair for the Libero Theater. Um, this, the design was previously approved. 
and um, we have uh, met with uh, the Libero Theater Foundation and our office has met with the uh, Pearl Chase Society and uh, Pelham DeForest and we had the opportunity to revisit um, the intermediate handrails and keeping them and after some uh, consulting with a code official and discussion with uh, building and safety here in town, we were able to find precedent for removing the intermediate handrails and keeping just the outside rails as part of the stair. Um, we believe it's, it creates a more open uh, experience for the theater. Okay. So. All right. Is that that's, that's it. That's it. We that's appreciate, all we have. Yep, yeah. We appreciate you coming. I know it seems like an awful lot to come no. to full commission mm -hmm. for this, but I was consulted on this, and since this is a historic, um, a designated historic structure, um, we felt that it could not be reviewed on consent. And that's that fine. It and to be reviewed by the full commission. Mm -hmm. Actually, I also, I think, you know, our office and the Liberal Foundation want to thank the Pearl Chase Society for uh, their efforts. On this. Do I have any staff comments? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will open public comment. I have one speaker slip from Mr. DeForest. Mr. DeForest. Thank you. Is, I am very pleased that the uh, Libero Designer, the Libero Association of Designers has listened to me and others, uh, members of the public. It's very important is this uh, valuable and venerable historic structure that the uh, design intent of both George Washington Smith and my father Lockwood DeForest to keep this uh, keep this simple as possible in the removal uh, though I'm not happy with the steps uh, the removal of the railings in the center in in the step or on the steps is certainly an improvement giving the uh, simplicity that both Smith and DeForest wanted for this site. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeForest. And I'm acknowledging a written letter from Ms. Paula Westbury in opposition. I will close pub <laughs> I will close public comment and bring it to the commission for questions. Commissioner Tree, any questions? No, I do not. Commissioner Sharp? No. Commissioner Lavoy? No. Commissioner no. Uh, Orias? Commissioner Winnick? No, thank you. How about comments? Any one of you? Yes. Yes, Mr. Lavoy. Um, uh, actually, you know, this is a really nice 3D model of the building. Thank you for the time it took to make it look like it looks. Um, I, I think this is a much improved um, mm. design, um, uh, and I would move for final approval. Second. Okay, we had a motion by, for final approval. Um, you need to make the findings as well, I think, don't you? Yes, he does. Requires historic, requires historic resource findings. Can we get to the proper page? I was trying to find it. It would be <laughs> number seven, I think. Oh, thanks. Um, on the blue sheet? On the blue sheet. Number seven on the... Oh, I just found it on the yellow sheet. That one. Required findings. And, sorry, Go ahead, I should no. have been on there. Um, and alterations to a, a landmark. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe if they were all different colors. <laughs> right, she. Oh, Chi Chi. <laughs> Thank you. Excuse us. <laughs> it's not like we haven't done this before. Um, we just do it our way. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, the historic resource findings is made as follows. The project will not cause a substantial adverse change in the significance of the historical resource. And the alterations are being made primarily to, for the purposes of restoring the landmark to its original drawing appearance. Well, I guess I'll skip that one. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> so we had a motion by... <laughs> Lavoy and a second by Sharp. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. You're on your way. Thank you for coming in. Uh, commission is going to go into recess for 10 minutes. We will reconvene at 3.50, 10 minutes to 4.
Item number 835 State Street. Would you all introduce yourselves for the record, please? Philip Suiting, landscape architect. Mark Shields, architect with Design Arc. Shannon Halliday, architect at Design Arc. Thank you. And Mr. Chair, before we begin, I just wanted yes. to, uh, you know, Gant. Mr. Suiting uh, is on this side of the table, and I just want to clarify with respect to. Um, the Historic Landmarks Commission chair acting as a consultant or landscape architect for a project. Uh, the city's, city attorney's office has determined that sole proprietors are allowed to prepare professional documents and make project presentations before a board they serve on based on an exception to the Political Reform Act and Fair Political Practices Commission rulings. The limitation is that they are not to unduly influence fellow board members on a decision by advocating for their clients. Exception allows board members to continue practicing their profession in the city while volunteering on a board. Thank, Thank you, you. Ms. Gans. Staff, do you have uh, a report? Just a brief introduction for you. Um, Allison DeBusco, project planner. The Entrada project received a substantial conformance determination from the city administrator on June 27th, 2013. And the project is now before you for project design approval since it has received that substantial conformance determination. The HLC last reviewed the project at a conceptual level in April of this year. And since that time, there have been two subcommittee meetings to review um, the various areas of the project. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have the uh, minutes from the... April meeting? Okay. The last time the full HLC commission saw this was in April 10th, 2013. And uh, the motion was to continue indefinitely with the following comments. The Commission would like to forward its consensus to the City Administrator that narrowing the State Street width is not supportable, simplify the arches. Some areas are still too contemporary in both the architecture and site plan. The practicality of identifying the parking structure is of concern. Refine the scale and avoid large buildings that, because of their mass, appear to be parking structures. The details will be of extreme importance. Look to the Biltmore as an example of large buildings whose detailing works toward balancing the landscaping and the architecture. The hotel entry should make a statement. Create a visual focal point for visitors to identify that they have reached their designation, destination. Indicate what distinguishes an area of one unit as one unit and avoid the grouping of buildings that do not relate to each other. That action was uh, approved seven to nothing. Thank you. Would you uh, commence with your presentation, please? Sure. I'll say a few words uh, just to give a summary of where we're at. Um, as Allison mentioned, we've had two HLC hearings to date um, and received substantial conformance determination. Uh, since we saw you last, uh, we had two subcommittee hearings, which we felt went very well, and it's with their recommendation that we're here before you again. Um, their comments were primarily on Area C. I'll let Mark Shields walk you through uh, the design uh, areas that we studied. Um, and there are no significant changes to Area A and B. Mark? Okay. Thanks, Shannon. I'd like to start with just briefly running through um, Area A and B to show you the minor um, revisions that we've made. I think it's best to start with the State Street elevation on A. Really... Can you call it out, please? Is it the right C spot? A300. A <clears throat> really, A um, is 
essentially the same as it was way, way back when, two and a half years ago, when we got the uh, original design approval. The subcommittee asked us to be very clear about what is on the rooftops. Um, so we, and, and Don Sharp in particular, said, just go ahead and show it and you know, we'll, we'll review it. So we have our, our two elevator towers that were always there, and then we have little trellises that you can kind of barely see. They're, out, they're way back in the middle of the roof, but we have wood trellises that will be planted um, coming off both entries to the elevators on the elevator towers. The, thank you, Don. The State Street um, elevation has not changed at all, and neither has the previously approved um, smaller building that fits between the old hotel and the Harbor View Inn. Moving right along to the west and south elevations. On the west elevation, which is really essentially butting up to Mission Creek where the Horny Toad building used to be, again, just kind of going with the design elements we'd used before that were previously approved. And again, the subcommittee asked us to um, show we have a pool that's, that's always been here on the third story. And we added a pool, like um, bar, a lineal bar up here next to the pool, which has uh, an awning-style trellis. Kind of, I like to say, similar to what Shelton has done here and there, but not quite as elaborate as that. And we have it much more simple and, and um, understated. The windows um, are very similar, and decks are very similar to the previous design um, of this western elevation. The spa windows are also similar. We could probably pull up the old western elevation so you guys can see that. The major change that, that we made, um, again, this is the western elevation as it was and the western elevation as it is today. Would you describe those for us, please? These are French doors with balconies, wrought iron balconies. With traditional pickets. Excuse me, Bill? With traditional picket rails. These guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be designing those in more detail as we move forward, of course. Um, the southern elevation, which is really, you can't really see it from anywhere since it butts up to the Harbor View Inn, it used to have, as I mentioned before, parking um, on the first floor, so we were able to eliminate that. I think that's the, main, the most significant change on um, Building A, and we have a beautiful kind of interior garden here. We studied the floor plan, we were able to open up this space with higher windows that open out into this um, garden area. So we think that's a nice improvement both for the interior of the hotel and also the ambiance of the hotel in general when you're wandering around in the hotel. Essentially, the elevation hasn't changed on the two, two wings. Maybe we should look at that in plan. Mm -hmm. to sh look, don't yeah, it's going to be hard to find. See what about this first floor. The idea of this AA 101. The idea of this kind of enhanced gallery, as we're calling it, or tea room, and the idea of it is when you come in the lobby and you're you're waiting or checking in at the lobby, you can kind of see through to this landscaped courtyard. And these ceilings are fairly high, and the arches go right up to the to the roof as close as we can, so that this, there's light coming into this space, and that this would be like you'd see in our Cartagena or somewhere, some fabulous Spanish courtyard is how we're imagining it, with lots of tropical plantings. Far more illustrative than this drawing indicates. <laughs> but Phil, of course, handle that. So we thought that was a nice improvement and um, had some favorable comments, I think, from the uh, subcommittee on the elevations of that space. So those are the major changes on A. And now if we move to B, 
just a quick overview of this. Yeah, quick overview of the site plan. Uh, we chatted with with Phil and. One of the best things about the way B has gone since our revisions is that we lost all, just to remind everybody, we lost all the underground parking. So now we have the ability to really make this Paseo a planted space because we, we're, we're over dirt. And the idea is that the Paseo is, and Phil further enhance this, kind of more lush in planting, kind of like a super comfortable hotel that you might visit and it's got that exotic quality to it. It's more of a garden than a barren dry paseo and that's the direction we'd like to go we do have some hotel rooms that butt up to the this walking space at either end again we used to have a parking entrance here and we don't anymore so now we have a little ramp up bicycle parking for the hotel that's really in a garden and then the handicap ramps up and you, you slowly kind of wander meander your way through the paseo back down to state street if you wish there was also, I think, um, the HLC had mentioned the importance of making this accessible to the Paseo. And we used to have steps here, so we kind of scratched our heads and figured out how we can put a ramp in. So this is a gradual ramp for handicap access to the Paseo. And then we've indicated a small fountain on axes with this entry. So it's, the idea is supposed to you look, look at the, uh, through the entrance to the um, hotel not only at the lobby, but you look through it to this landscaped Paseo beyond. So we think that that will be nice and enticing for visitors and pedestrians alike. <clears throat> we've, we've worked on more landscaping here on the Helena side. And again, it's, it's really nice not to have that, that extra parking throat there as well. The corner plantings are similar to what was previously approved. We have a really nice planter on the corner. And Phil will go into more detail on that as well. <clears throat> the elevations are substantially the same as they were before. There's little things here and there. We were lucky enough to lose the elevator tower that was visible from State Street on the left side of the building, opening up the view corridor a bit better. We were able to widen the view corridor another foot. I mean, it's in inches now, but... Um, the idea is, has always been that you can look through the, the Paseo to see the mountains beyond. And we feel that our plantings will be lower, a few palm trees sticking up, but we'd really like to keep the Paseo, a garden, make it a garden, and still provide the, the mountain views through over the top of everything. The um, Mason Street elevation, which is the hotel entry, really hasn't changed substantially from where we were before. We still have this um, freeze... Uh, parapet entrance with the, with the big arch that leads you at, at once into the Paseo Garden and then on the left hand side you enter the lobby directly. We still like the idea of the Phoenix Canary Ansys along Mason Street to enhance the, the, the height of, uh, of the substantial quality of this, this architecture and the three-story mass. Uh, again around the corner we have our, our, our landscaping. This is um, the entry to the hotel offices. And we've changed the interior around a little bit, but it really hasn't affected the, the exterior. Again, we're going with, and it's, it hasn't changed at all, really, from the previously approved design, the more repetitive, simple window arrangements on the hotel facade. BA301. The, the Helena Street elevation is, again, very similar to what we had before, um, with the exception of the, the parking throat is gone, and now we really have just the enhanced garden bicycle parking area for the hotel, which at once will, I think, enhance Helena Avenue with, with landscaping and, and at the same time draw people in if they want to wander through the Paseo to a State Street, kind of much like you wander through the the uh, Paseo on um, El Paseo Nuevo, not El Paseo Nuevo, El Paseo, El Paseo on um, Anacap Street. That's what we're thinking. Um, the southern elevation, which butts up to the mountain air parking lot, has changed slightly, only in that we've rearranged some of these windows, larger windows down below, to accommodate a restaurant in this space, whereas we used to have parking. We still do have a little bit of, um, we think it's going to be electric car parking for the valets in this area. Um, that's the only parking that's left on B. All the 
um, public parking and valet parking is now, to remind everybody, on C, across the street. So I think if you compare these to the old elevations, you'll find they're very similar. We could pull those up if you like. You guys have that set, that little set? He's tagged Don B. Mm -hmm. Here So that's the, these are the Helena elevations compared to where we were and where we are. I like the way the hotel breaks down in massing as it goes towards Helena, which always seems a little bit more casual to me. Who knows what's going to happen on the other side of Helena Street, but it, uh, I think the scale's nicer. We were here with the prior. Yeah, you were. We were. Remember, Bill? Yeah. So I'm not seeing it right there immediately. You had asked us to simplify the elevations and. Right. Yeah. Right. So many different versions, but. <laughs> no, that, that it was more. It like was that. similar, wasn't it? Yeah. Is that right? There's got to be another one. <clears throat> it's funny that that's not there. Yeah. Well, anyway, yep. this this was the it's very similar to the previously approved facade. There we go. There we go. Yeah, this this is the guy. So that top one was previously approved. It's the previously approved. We lost the elevator tower there. Mm -hmm. That's really the only substantial change. So um, that's kind of where we are on A and B, and the subcommittee felt comfortable moving us forward, and hopefully you guys will see that we're close to where we were before and like it and be able to push us forward to um, project, design. project design approval on those two. Michael, um, do you want to give us a brief rundown on A and B and I think several that, meetings we had. Yeah, um, so Commissioner Sharp and Commissioner Rios and myself and met with Bill and, and Mark and the lady who's getting married. Melissa. Melissa. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything that, that uh, Mark... Yes, congratulations, Melissa. Yes, congratulations. She is watching. Everything, are, everything right. that Mark has, has gone through, I don't recall anything um, different. I, I know that the elevation, uh, the, roof, the roof drawings were really important on Area A. And I think the details will be coming in terms of the depth of the windows and some of the other stuff on area B. We have those details yeah. here, actually. Yeah, okay. Fair um, right. So yeah. they'll be presented today. Um, our, our, uh, I think it's safe to say that our feelings were generally very positive as to how it, how it had gone. And area C was the one that required uh, a bit more work. Um, and that was where the uh, where Commissioner Suiting uh, presented his landscape plan, which was, I think, also a, a good bit more simplified, as, is, as is some, the architectures are really plain when you look at the old architectural elevations, um, how, how much more simple this, this <coughs> new iteration is. Although I was just Mr. Suiting at that time. You were just Mr. Suiting then, is that, that's correct. <laughs> um, so I, I just, um, unless I'm sorely mistaken, um, my feeling about those subcommittee meetings was that we were generally in in agreement and uh, approving of the direction of the project, fair to say? Yes. Yeah. Correct, Ms. Arias? Yes. Do we want to just review these two areas and then? I yes. think it's better to review these two areas mm -hmm. as uh, because we were most concerned about area C and probably 
requested the great, greatest number of changes and ideas, and I think uh, we should review these two, which are much simpler in, in my estimation. Any member of the public wish to address A or B? Ah, we have Mr. Uh, believe it or not, Kellen DeForest. Quite <laughs> shocking. Just well, Ms. Westbury. Kellen DeForest, looking at these renderings, I'm a little disappointed, and maybe I didn't see that February go around. Building B, especially from the Mason Street side, which I, looks very ordinary with these stacked windows. I presume they're necessary because there are hotel rooms behind them, but uh, it, it looks very pedestrian, and I'm wondering, I would like if the windows weren't so stacked, we could emulate a little bit the uh, design of El Paseo. Thank you. Thank you, Kellum. Any other members of the public wish to speak? I see none, so we'll close the public comment and bring it back to the board. Do you have a letter to acknowledge? Evidently not. I don't. Just acknowledge the letter. We'd be happy to provide. She you did a have a letter. <laughs> okay, we will recognize Ms. Westbury's letter. Very good. In opposition. Commissioner Sharp, if I could just uh, mention a couple items that I believe were in the HLC minutes, but just to be very clear about it, one of the conditions of approval does talk to making the public plazas and paseos more inviting, and so just something to keep in mind through your review. Also a comment that several of the planning commissioners had was that the design of the valet and the hotel entrance um, should ensure that the public sidewalk does not feel like part of the private development, which can be a difficult thing to achieve, but as much as possible given that there is that arcade over the public sidewalk. Um, and just to mention for the record, there were several conditions of approval that were originally written for the project. Um, however, they were based on a design from several iterations ago. I can read those for you if you'd like, although I don't believe they're that applicable to the project anymore. Okay, thank you. In response to uh, Mr. DeForest, I would like to show, and you can see this on the screen, behind you, kill him, I believe. This is a prior Mason Street, several Mason Street yeah. elevations where stack windows became less evident, but the architecture certainly became more complicated, not to mention expensive, but uh, more contrived just to hide the stack windows by burying the roof heights, uh, gables, hips, and so forth, and this was probably six months ago, and, and we encouraged Mr. Shields to simplify it, and I'm showing here a photograph of the news press building, if they could pan even more in here, um, which shows stacked windows. They're varying in height and maybe width, but it's it's more of an honest approach, we feel, to what a hotel is stacked rooms. And, uh, okay, <laughs> end of lecture here. <clears throat> Any questions from the commissioners? Mr. Winnick? I just have one. Good. I have one. Um, on AA301, and this is only elicited because you were kind enough to show both the before and after um, image, I just noticed on the right-hand side of the roof, 
It had gone from before it was a gable, I'm sorry, a, AA301. So building A, the elevations. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I can go from memory, but or I can come over there. Is it in there? Yeah, it is. Anyway, just on the right-hand side of the building, of the new addition on the west elevation, the right-hand side of the building Here. on one of the previous schemes, thank you, that location had a more of a gabled end. I was just kind of curious why that changed. We had to provide more space for the pool, which is up here. Uh -huh. And we felt that, that that area in particular, where it's located on the building, wasn't as significant architecturally, certainly, mm -hmm. and more important for management to have the space for the, the pool that we liked. The other thing about this space, when you're thinking about it from a, a design standpoint, is when you're up there, this is an amazing place to be. I mean, I hate to bring up the canary again because Bill loves the roof on the, mm -hmm. on the canary. <laughs> but when you're, when you're up there, the view of the harbor is spectacular, and so we wanted to really make that a nice space, and we needed that extra mm -hmm. bit of um, square footage for the pool. Okay. And so we lost the gable. That was the main reason for it. But essentially, it's the very back of the project that you'll probably never see. It's, it's essentially Mission Creek, the back mm -hmm. corner, and then up against Roma Santos building as well. But again, we try to keep things just really simple, understated, following um, the uh, subcommittee's direction not trying to get fancy with any of our window placements, but just being very practical about the way, mm -hmm. especially A, since A is so rational to begin with. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are. Thank you. Mr. Reyes, any questions? No. Mr. Lavoie? No questions. I do not. Commish? I do not commish. OK. Do you want to do the landscaping for A and B now, sure. or yeah, wait? I, think, I was just thinking that might be a good thing to do. Oh, I could hear that. <laughs> <laughs> if we could go to so, no, C1. Look up there. Yeah, I'm just going to get this off of it. There, that was easy. <laughs> just moving in C5. Okay, we will start. start with area B here. And as um, Mr. Shields mentioned, we are doing more of a um, sort of um, organic or um, I'd call it garden-esque treatment of this Paseo, um, similar to some of the nicer walkways um, at the Biltmore. Um, not quite as hardscapey as the, if that's a word, hardscapey, as um, <laughs> yeah, technical term, uh, you know, El Paseo. So it's kind of somewhere in between the, the, the feeling of El Paseo, because I think one of the commissioners asked us to look at El Paseo and also look at um, the, um, the site design at the Biltmore and, and the building design too. So um, we, we went for, from more of a rigid, which what we had was kind of very linear uh, planters against the building and even in one iteration we just had pots. But now that we're at Mother Earth, we're um, able to do um, more organic type planting, very uh, much garden-esque, and that's sort of the inspiration for that. Um, around the building, we have um, ample landscape opportunities, um, both here um, at one throat side of the throat for the parking garage, and then here at this back Paseo entrance, which has a nice, um, graceful ramp up to, ramp in a few steps up to the main Paseo. Um, at this corner here, um, another generous landscape planting. And then again, as um, Mr. Shields mentioned, we have the uh, Canary Island palms. And I think we actually have one too many shown in there. Um, originally, um, at the entrance to the Paseo off of State Street, we had thought about a fountain here. But then the more I was thinking about th that fountain, the more I felt it diluted the fountain that is um, at the corner where Area C is. And the more it dilutes this fountain. I want this fountain to be sort of serendipitous. I don't really want it to necessarily be on axis with anything or lined up. I just want it to seem like it kind of happened there. and that. Um, it doesn't need to be, since this is so much more natural and organic, doesn't need to be, you know, on axis with, with anything else or any other entrance. So that, that, that's how we arrived at that. Um, then along the parking lot on the um, south elevation, um, we have uh, some narrow planters to get some decent uh, plant material in there to help with the elevation of, of the building of Area B on that side. Um, 
going to area A, oops, which is going to be actually back here. I, oh, do you want to look at the top of, uh, well, no, that's, there's not much on the top of area B. Um, there is a, a paseo here on the upper deck, and so we're just doing um, some potted plants here that's and a. there. Yeah. Is this A? Yeah. Sorry. This is... Mm -hmm. Is that A? No. That's A. That's A? Yeah. That's A. It's just a very upper roof, and then there's the pool. Okay. I'm yeah. sorry. You're right. You're right. Okay. Um, keep going back. Yeah. Keep going back here. Yeah, too many doors. Yeah. Okay. Um, this, then, is the top of area. Let's start at the yeah, bottom of area A. Might as well. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay, so the bottom of area A. Um, again, Mark uh, talked, or Mr. Shields talked about this um, sort of courtyard um, atrium, if you will. Um, I think one subcommittee member mentioned that it might be somewhat like a conservatory. So we're thinking a lot of um, lush type plantings, um, some taller plantings. Trying to keep, though, as much light as we can um, in through there, because it's going to be important not only for the building to have that light coming in, because this is kind of a light well, but also to um, have or to help the lawn survive. I'm not even thoroughly convinced that a lawn will survive in that much or that low of light. So um, we're still studying that. Um, along Mission Creek here, um, we have the uh, decomposed granite pathway that connects up to the existing harbor. Um, view path and uh, the landscape back here consists of mostly riparian um, type material like sycamores and some oaks I believe. Um, let's go to the upper deck I'm sorry of area A. This is the um, next level up. It's not the highest level but this is where the pool is. Um, proposing uh, a couple of tall um, foliage plants, maybe like a southern magnolia or a small fan palm, or maybe even a cycad in there. Don't really want to put a citrus or olive in there because most the, the citrus will attract bees, and since we're next to a pool here, I don't want people to um, get stung. Um, so we're you know trying to be sensitive to that. Um, it's a you know it's a very simple rooftop landscape. Um, the other landscape over here, we have vines that are on the trellis, and those will be in pots, um, and a few pots that are scattered um, throughout the upper deck. I was really trying to kind of um, keep it simple and not make it completely visible from um, the the ground. So then the very top is, um, again, like I said, I don't really want to put large trees up there and have things popping up above the parapet line. So we're just uh, doing a series of small um, pot groupings there. Um, and this will probably mostly be used for a uh, sun lounge or a tanning deck. So um, I don't really want to fill it up with too many uh, tall plants to shade out the people that want to get skin cancer. I mean, sun tanning. <laughs> Okay, so we already talked about area B, and I'm sorry I'm skipping around like this. Um, area B has several roof decks, keeping it very simple. Um, maybe some low hedges around some of the larger areas and some pots as well. Uh, that takes care of area A and B, and then we'd go on to C, so I'll wait for that. Thank you. Are there any questions about the landscaping? Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Mr. Drury. If you're if you're concerned about that lawn, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> why have it at all? Well, that's why I'm not sure I'm going to do it. So I might change that to something different. Uh, it, might, I, it might be something different than lawn. Because what you showed in for area B and with that the, that those meandering flagstones and that, mm -hmm. that gold matrix mm -hmm. of the that smooth gravel, that would be easier to deal with. That was a comment. Definitely. Sorry. I don't think they want to wheel the lawnmower through the main lobby <laughs> myself. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. That was, a, that, was a, that, that was another consideration that I had, but mainly the survivability of that lawn. But what I didn't have time to do, Commissioner Drury, was a um, shade and shadow study on that. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly convinced that it's going to be in deep I shadow. Think you're probably but right. you know, I, I do want to study it just to make sure. All right, got to move along here. Let's have comments on A and B. 
Mr. Winnick? Um, I think I have more questions, so I think it's good. Ms. Arias, I'm any fine. comments? Mr. Uh, Lavoie? Um, a, a few. Um, uh, the architecture is fine. Um, uh, in area A, uh, where the pool, new pool deck is, um, the, the flat roof is fine. I, I think it's consistent with the existing building. Um, however, I would not want to see a, a glass rail on top of the parapet. Not at all. Um, I'm, I still am very concerned about all of the clutter between State Street and your Paseo on area, this one. Me. All of this stuff really chokes off um, a view into that Paseo. And I think that's unfortunate and it needs to be radically simplified um, and opened up. Um, you may have to gate it, you probably will gate it, but it still needs to be visually opened up. Um, it also bothers me um, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it bothered me in plan before I knew that this was the lobby, um, that you, you, you have this axis and the, the walkway lines up and the palm trees line up and then it just sort of like, well, dies. Um, but the center axis of the building, as you see it from that standing over here, is really right here. So it seems to me and that, that, I mean, this is your primary entrance. You want people to walk in the middle of that arch, is my guess, mm -hmm. um, and come into the lobby. Um, unless you want them to come in here and go in that way. That's an option. It's almost like the, the Paseo approach became more important than the lobby. And it, and it, which door yeah. do you want them to use? This one? It would be this one here. This one right yeah. here? Because this is sloping up. Okay. Then, then, then you, you really need to shift this back into the middle of this arch. More uh, northerly. Or shift the arch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they're not working together. Mm -hmm. but, but, but more than anything else, simplify this. Um, I think this is good. this has the potential of being lovely. I'm thinking there's there's one at the Mission Inn that's really kind of nice. Yeah, the dining room that opens up to a garden. San Bernardino Mission Inn, Riverside. Riverside Mission. Inn. That's right. Um, the architecture on both buildings is generally acceptable. Although I, I, I'm having problems with the, this arch and how it relates to the entrance and how it. You know, it works on the building, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure it mm -hmm. works in the plan. Mm -hmm. Is that it? That's it. Mr. Drury? Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, Commissioner Lavoie, so your objection is, is somewhat visual in terms of how it ties in with what's across the street? No, well, no, on, on, well, we'll talk about the other side of the street next. But no, on this side of the street, it, it's sort of like the center of the arch, the big arch entrance is right here. The center of the walkway mm -hmm. is shifted onto the Paseo. Yeah. And then the two palm trees relate to the Paseo, not to the architecture. Yeah. Okay. And that big arch is what you're going to see mm -hmm. when you're I out. Think, I think public. we need to shift all this up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. That would help. Mm -hmm. It doesn't particularly I, relate I would, to anything. I, my over comment here. Was yeah. I, would be I concur. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. I'm wondering if we shouldn't take a vote on A and B before we move into C. I think that's a reasonable. As long as we're entitled to questions like that, but can we do that? Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Susan's <laughs> usually <laughs> grumbled about such pa partial approvals in the past. In, in general, it isn't preferred. This is an unusual project in that, that it has three separate sites all on one MST, so it's already awkward. Uh, okay. So it's okay. So we can move <laughs> one side ahead of another? <laughs> Fine. Um, well, um, when, when will you want to come back? In two weeks? 
In two weeks would be great. Okay, so I'd make a motion for um, a two-week continuance with the comment that the architecture is acceptable at this stage. That um, it, it would be the desire of the commission not to have any glass railings anywhere. Um, that the Paseo in, I won't get it right, area B, B um, be opened up to State Street and, and radically simplified. And that the connection on, across Mason Street at the lobby, Paseo entrance, central arch, slash walkway, slash palm tree LA, be resolved in a more symmetrical manner. Do you want to make a comment on the uh, landscape plan? Yes. Just <coughs> that they're, gen they're generally acceptable? And yes. Mighty fine? Okay. Yes. Is that a motion? That's a motion. Was there a second to that motion? Second, second by Winnick. I have a couple questions. Again, regarding this entry. Um, you do not have a drop-off space for unloading and loading cars or passengers. That, that's the case. What, what is this? That's just a pattern in the, in the pavement. OK, that isn't. And the cross hatching represents? That's our queuing area, which is, I think the city agreed in an Elson, you can tell me if I'm wrong, that this we can stripe and, and, and keep. And there's still room for two yes. cars mm -hmm. to bypass. Mm -hmm. OK. Well, Any further discussions? Well, questions? I think you, you've been sort of sounding this a bit, that there is no drop off space for people pulling onto Mason Street to drop to check into the hotel. I mean, there's no pullover uh, unless you actually dedicate one. Well, I have always been concerned about the yeah. lack of mm -hmm. that. However, mm -hmm. I think that horse has been gone for quite a while. For a while? Yeah. Well, also, I, I believe they were talking about um, dedicating some, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Shields, dedicating some of this um, interior space as um, a a place to uh, hold baggage and, 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 you know, cue some of the baggage, too, so that it's not on the, I mean, yeah, correct I me mean, if I'm wrong. Yeah, I that's going to be the prime focus of the hotel management is to keep this flowing. And it's definitely going to be, you know, 24-7, so. Yeah, like, on you know. Friday afternoon, mm -hmm. people are going to be stacked up on State Street, I believe, but so be it at this point. All right, we've had a motion for a two-week continuance for A and B only. With those comments, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Let's go on to area C. OK, area C. C. Whoops. Uh-oh, now, uh -oh, now, you, now you messed us up. <laughs> Boy, did I. <laughs> it's all right. We can go back. We can go back. Oh, right. gonna, it's back that way. We're going to look at the side plan first. <coughs> oh, which? Just a, Keep moving that away down. Go past all the bees. There you go. Cool. Okay, great. Look out. I was just looking. CAS01. Yep. We're in the Okay, um, I, I hear you on um, restudying this connection. I think that makes a lot of sense to move it more northerly, and we can study what the implications are over here. But I don't see anything severe with that with that thinking. Um, we we still like the idea of our <coughs> split level up corner park and. We were asked by the subcommittee and maybe even the, the full board a while ago to really study this area and, and make it more viable. So what we did is we thought that expanding the palm trees out onto State Street wasn't a good idea. So we've actually eliminated 
this row of palms, which were, was in an earlier plan, to make this more of a focal point and a place. We've um, decided to go with DG around this lineal fountain, which is chip seal, which is now on axes, which was one of Donna's suggestions with this window in the restaurant. So we, we picked up on the axial, or, axial relationship here, changed the architecture here, which you can see in elevation in a moment, to relate to the, to the Moorish style fountain. Again, this is raised a bit from the uh, chip seal court. And the idea is that people can sit here and, and relax as they're walking up State Street. It's a nice view from the restaurant looking um, south towards the ocean. And again, it's, it's a bit of a destination, I think. When you pull up from State Street, you'll see the corner open up as opposed to the opposite side of the street, which is another new, newer building. So I think it will be inviting and somewhat exotic and different than, than what you see typically um, around town. Um, we also like the idea of the way when you're coming down State Street, it really still opens up the vista of the hotel entry as well. Um, Phil will talk more about the upper level uh, plaza area, which is a lawn. And I think we'll just move right into, well, actually there's one idea here that I think Bill mentioned it last time, that the, the monumental stair coming down from the outdoor uh, venue space was just so direct and straight. So we studied that and actually put in a, f a few more landings and actually a return landing at the end so that you didn't feel like you were just going to fall all the way down the stair. And I think it actually helped it, broke it up, broke up the monumentality of it um, architecturally as well by adding this return. We had some elevations of that, which I'll show you in a second. So let's move on to the elevations. CA302. Okay. This is the State Street elevation, starting at the Vic, which, as you know, was a historic building that we're just replicating, moving all the way down along State Street. The uh, subcommittee had a few comments, and, and part of the comments started with the full board's comments way back when. Um, I think it was Bill who mentioned that he thought there should be more of a focal point, and some people had liked the kind of hexagonal tower we had on one of the previous designs. So we thought it would be nice to accentuate the corner element a bit. Before, we had the hip just wrapping around the corner. And so instead, we've, we've added a parapet that wouldn't have signage on it. It might have a, a plaster, and, and Don Sharp actually suggested, suggested this, a plaster design up here, much like you see here and there around town. I've always admired the one up on Upper State Street past the Arlington, the old medical foundation clinic building that had the plaster diamonds. Something like that, very subtle, no color, just a, a plaster reveal. Anyway, I think this gives the corner a little bit more power, a little bit more interest, it's a little bit more exotic, and also it's a nice backdrop to our proposed uh, palm tree alley and fountain. And so I, I think that was a nice change. The subcommittee seemed to, to like it as well. Um, along, along the State Street, um, one of the comments was people didn't, didn't like our original arch opening to the storefront, which actually had like a foot to it, kind of maybe a little too gestural. And I still think an arch is, is nice, and I think it will work better on the south side of the street because it's getting more sun versus the, the one that um, is on Upper State Street that seems dark. And I've always liked this little one on, I think it's Delaguerra, West Delaguerra, where we have the, mm -hmm. West the simplicity of that is, is kind of what I'm thinking. Um, and I like the contrast between more of a um, squared off columnar entry to a store. We've got the, the arch, the big arch here, which could be, I think, detailed well. I like the fact that it um, changes the character of the store, so each, each store owner can have an identity. So that's what we're thinking on that, and so we, we can refine that some more. Um, looking beyond, you can see the, the stair as it comes down, and then we have a few big potted plants and the stepping stair railing as it drops, and then the return to the upper plaza. We're staying with the simplicity of the arches. 
think people liked our, our opening here, and we've detailed that. We've got details um, to show you as well. Going over to the Mason Street side, we studied, people were uncomfortable with this entry, which is the entrance to our um, pre-function room, to the conference rooms for the hotel. And really, that's a, a, a nice space that looks out into the upper uh, park. And what we did there, we liked the feeling of that. We added these corbels in the corner to kind of soften it a bit and actually made these columns a lot thicker to kind of give it that more substantial feeling. This, again, is a cantilevered uh, wrought iron grill or grate, which we have details of in here, just to sh help shade the, um, the glass. There are a lot of comments about how the Moorish arch, um, people were uncomfortable with that, and this facade of the corner building, which starts to relate to the funk zone, um, which we're, we're proud of. So we restudied the arch and really softened it, made it a little bit lower, um, slightly Moorish, but just a little bit um, friendlier feeling. The colonnade around the corner, we restudied and just went with simple arches all the way around the corner with an interesting kind of custom column as the corner element, much like we're doing on the restaurant entrance on State Street. And so these columns would have, we will bring back a more refined version of these two columns, which will have emphasis to them and some kind of a unique design that, that makes them interesting, but not too crazy. Moving on along to the Blaine Street elevations. Looking from the Beacons building towards State, this is the elevation you'd see, which is really the, the back side of our parking, which is discreet in that it's off of Helena towards the end of the railroad tracks. We had a more elaborate facade <laughs> here at the parking entry, and I was looking at that as I was redoing everything else, and it just seemed so elaborate and almost too dramatic for just a parking entrance. So I, I went with our simple square venting, um, windows above and this ex accentuated that facade with palm trees. It really is the back of the, the project and want it to be simple and not draw a lot of attention. We still love the idea of providing um, the space for murals like once were, um, still are actually on Mason Street now for the artists um, to do as they will. The uh, railroad track facade is again just really simple. We hope to do a little bit more with landscaping. We have <coughs> wrought iron vent windows that go into the parking, some grill work. Here and there, an accent tree, a low maybe ficus nitsidars, or the hedge that goes up on the buildings, as a thought, just to soften it. But again, kind of goes with that industrial side of the tracks, um, funk zone style which I think blends well with the, the whole Beacons uh, building, which I understand is historic now. Yes, mm -hmm. no? yeah. What else did we do on C? Um, we have various details of, of, for all three projects now, we have uh, preliminary details. And I just wanted to point out the subcommittee thought that it was always important to show the the wall thicknesses are, are, are always substantial and all of our elevations about 12 inches thick. Of course, all the, the sketchy wrought iron details that we've shown in elevation will be refined. Something like this for our split handrails, or maybe, maybe even simpler. Some of the sunshade elements will be look like this in section, where we've got the, the wrought iron ties to the building with a basket weave uh, flat metal with, um, we're thinking, nicely detailed buttons and a, and a, and a nice uh, front edge this, that has a little bit more detail to it, but very simple. Here and there we have trellises and we're, we're thinking of the, the triple stack trellises with uh, um, dug fir beams, stained wood, copper flashing. Here and there we have a grill detail where we have a window behind a grill, so like the old school um, styling will have the, the grill proud of the window, the window opens in. Our stairs on the Paseo, and Philly can chime in on this if you like as well. We're thinking our rustic flagstone, still not unlike the mission steps, which are sandstone, but that same feeling wide 
easy to walk up, gracious, kind nice of gets you to flow, get you to flow up. Um, here and there we have a cantilever balcony, so we plan to have some nicely designed corbels that support those plaster corbels. Again, trying to keep things relatively simple. And we have a variety of uh, plaster cornices that will look something like this. OG to edge. And then I think, is it, we have any more for C? Is that it? one page for C? Yeah. We have more details for A and B, which are details that kind of work in both situations. But that gives you an idea of where we're going with our detailing. Trying to keep it simple, not too fancy. Trying to tone everything down, I think, as we move forward into uh, design development, we'll be even looking at that more. So. OK, thank you. Can I speak now real quick? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. I'll, be real real, quick. I'll be real brief, because I know it's getting late. Um, so back to area C here. Uh, thank you, Shannon. That would be area C. Okay, so area C, as Mark mentioned, um, would have the allay of palm trees, and some people had a concern that that would be too Southern California, but I think the way we treat this um, in its materials is going to take it um, so far from Southern California that you'll be ashamed you made that um, comment. <laughs> We're <right>. um, we'll <laughs> see. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm, I'm giving you a hard time. I'm teasing you, of course. But uh, with, the, in Southern with, with the materials and, and, and the old world style we're trying to create here, it's going to be so far removed from that Southern California look that um, I think everybody's thinking of with more of a lush tropical lawn type landscape. So I, I'm, I'm real confident that that's going to turn out very nice. Um, uh, we still have a uh, real simple uh, lawn area up here. Um, we had a different edge pattern at one time. We simplified that. Those would be um, potted trees, and I'm thinking either citrus or olive. Um, some large planting like giant bird of paradise or um, a, a palm in those corners. Some um, pots with uh, vines on them. Um, very simple. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. I think that's probably all you really want to hear from me, and um, you can make comments uh, when you get there. Okay, any oh, questions? Here's, here's sort of a Inspiration. Mr. Mr. Chair? Uh, Mr. 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 Chair? Mr. Drury. I have a question about the steps, about the curve of the, the steps below the lawn that we, we suggested. And they're, they're still at right angles. This right here. Yeah. We felt that that right angle was um, more appropriate than trying to 45 or um, diagonal cut those. It just, we, we did study that and it just didn't look quite right. This is your considered opinion. This is my considered opinion, and, 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 not, and, and, and not just mine. Um, you know, I, I did <laughs> consult with other people and with the team, obviously. Mr. Chair? We all felt that way. Thank you. Could you tell me what the slope is across here, approximately? Um, it's about maybe two feet, foot and a half. Okay. From, from face of restaurant. Think, yeah, yeah, from here, or actually from face of restaurant yeah. to there. Right? Okay. From here yeah. to here, it's, yeah. Okay, I'm opening up to public comment, and we have Mr. Uh, DeForest to speak. I don't, I'm concerned about the steps up to the lawn area, that huge expanse of steps, which would look very nice. And, uh, but just coming off the libero thing, are they going to have to have railings that they be cluttered with handrails at every few feet. Mm -hmm. I'm just concerned about clutter. Thank you, Kellum. I will now close the public portion and bring it back for questions. Do you have any further questions, Mr. Drury? I, I probably do, but I can't remember them at the I... moment. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lavoie, any further questions? No, that was that was my only one. Judy? Yeah, I still don't like the arch. And I was wondering if there was any ways you could soften it so it seemed to blend in better with the rest of the 
the buildings. Which arch was that? Uh, the on the usual street. one that I don't like. The usual the, one? Yeah. The one on Which one? She means this one. It's the state one or the Mason one? The state one. Yeah. Really? I, I just, it just, it, there's a harmony to the building and then all of a sudden, and I don't know whether you can blend it in to not be so Mark obvious. did mention this. I will say that this arch is about half the width of this arch. And that scale makes a big difference. It's a but nice scale. Yeah, it's a nice scale. We can study that. Yeah, as he did say he would study yeah. that. Mr. Winnick, any questions? Well, I guess I'll just stay on the same subject for a second. Um, have you, well, just because I mean, we're all like pent up designers, sorry. Did you study, um, I don't know if you're going to go back and study, but it seems that the arch is being kept rather low, so I guess I'm kind of curious, is there an opportunity for it to be a taller arch if it wants to be such an important arch? Possibly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or is there some restriction that's not going to go again? I think the only restriction is it's always nice to have a little bit of mass around things, and I mm -hmm. felt if it was any taller, we would have enough plaster around it, certainly. Had, had you, along the way, had that be more Moorish and then get asked by the committee not to be less Moorish, I wonder? It was a little more um, freeform before. Mm -hmm. and so we toned it down, and we could even make it smaller, I suppose, to bring it, if that's an issue. Um, I think that this type of detailing is appropriate for the area. It certainly makes it I just think it's important to have the storefronts be slightly different from each other, and I think it adds mm -hmm. to the quality of the, the street facade along State. So. Mr. Chair, on yes, that point, Judy. having the storefronts be somewhat separate, you could change the actual elevation of, of, the, of the storefront slightly they do. in and out, mm -hmm. so that, that that would also give you the same They thing. do in plan. If you look at the plan, we've moved that well, one in a we, bit. <laughs> we just get these things right now, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I, I, I like the fact that you softened the, the Moorish arch over here. I, I think that's good. It's just, I don't know, is there any way you could, and this is not probably possible, to have that kind of, instead of just the... The big circle. Yeah, just have it somewhat... Breaking everybody out. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry, so I can't that's hear. That's okay. I understand. Thanks. Okay, I'm not. I'm not an architect, yeah. but I just, you know, I just don't see the, the flow with this building. Okay. Any other questions, comments, Mr. Drury, Mr. Chair? Um, I, I, <clears throat> it's just a visual thing, but the the um, the support for the. I'm pointing to the arch on State That's Street that, that finishes on. I'm on uh, CA 302. That's right there. And I, I don't. Maybe it's just. Maybe it's absolutely proper, but that that seems somewhat flimsy. Which one are you looking at, Commissioner Jury? Are you looking at the one at the very end of the building? That one. He that said he was going to continue seems, to it seems study a little, it. A little yeah. small. And particularly small when you look at the at the elevation from Mason Street. It just seems to me that there's all this stuff going, and then it ends up in this rather small column. That's my comment. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I think it's coming come along a long way. I'm really disappointed about that angle on the stairs, but I'll live with it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Lavoy. Um, I sort of agree that, that this doesn't isn't working quite yet. Mm -hmm. um, there is an arch on State Street. <laughs> it's, you know, it's very simple, but but it but it has it has a, a a form to it as it goes back. It's not just a square right, it's got the arch, um, and then the glass is set back. And you may have been involved in that glass design, as I vaguely remember. What, why that arch is such a beautiful thing, and it was going to get removed at one, one point, um, was I think its depth and its thickness and its shape made it so unique above everything else on State Street that I think it worked really well. And I, I was sad when a proposal came in to see it removed. Um, 
I agree with Commissioner Drury's comment about this corner is very weak. Um, and, and, and I still want something to stick up on the corner. Something needs to, to say corner, whether an obelisk or a pot or something. Um, and and um, this building is, 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 the shape of it I think is fine. Um, I, I, I need to be shown the historical precedent for this arch because it looks very strange to me. Um, and, if, and if this building is going to be Moorish, then this building should be Moorish, mm -hmm. not oh, yeah, Romanesque and Moorish and what happens, this is Moorish enough. Um, but, but whatever you do to these two arches needs to, be, needs to work together along with the, the arch on the side. Um, the, the problem I have in both plan and elevation um, are, are oh, okay, and this is still way too contemporary. The entrance in Shuri Ben Center is, is too contemporary, way too contemporary. Um, and it is sort of like inconsistent with everything else you've done. Um, is, is, now, uh, elevations first. If someone didn't tell me that this was the axis of this building, I wouldn't think of it as it at all. Um, the axis coming out of your front door lands somewhere in here. There's nothing on this facade that tells me there's a reason for that axis to be there. And then when I go this way, there isn't an axis, and, it, and the axis doesn't necessarily need to be on the ground floor. Perhaps it's one of these towers shifts and becomes the, the center of that. Now to the plan itself. This is too contemporary. This is too contemporary. Abandon the idea. It's a bad idea. It doesn't work in Hispanic architecture. It just doesn't. It's way to contemporary. And so how do you make it traditional? Most Spanish gardens are axial. Only the English did asymmetrical gardens. So if this is the middle of this garden, it needs to relate to the, these two gardens need to relate together. They need to work together. I mean, I, you know, it seems to me that maybe if you flipped it, the star becomes the center that lines up with that, lines up with something on the architecture. Um, maybe this axis gets reinforced with, with you know, one more set of pots. Um, um, you know, the corner stairs are not traditional. You need to resolve it in a different way. Um, and then uh, we've already talked about this axis, but if, if this axis needs to sort of like relate through this garden to something, to something on the other building, same way this way, wherever you establish that, that axial thing, it, it is always usually in Spanish architecture centered on a doorway or a portal or, or something, a fountain or something. <coughs> it, it, the arch Gar the gardening enhances the architecture. It doesn't float like it does in modern architecture. Gotcha. Um, I think this is going to be a lovely space, by the way. I, I, I am in full support of this. I'm, I'm somewhat concerned that the, the trees along State Street, for most of the extent of State Street, are pretty irregular, pretty organic. And all of a sudden, we have. Mm. Yeah. A pretty regular pattern. Yeah. This pattern yeah, needs to be broken. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Spacing, whatever. Different different tree species. Different tree species. Yeah. 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 I got you. In a way, if this is looser, then this is stronger. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Right. exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And even Very much elimination so. of some of the, the canopy there too. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Rios. Well, I already said what I said. All right, Mr. Winnick. Uh, not good. too much to add. The first thing I want to do is I want to thank you for your solution on the stair. I think it's greatly improved. The one that cascades down to that garden that is in the center. Yeah, I think it, it gets what you described as the character that you're trying to achieve. I think you did it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it hit me, and I, I'm sure I tried it. I know I'm supposed to refrain from design. As I was hearing everybody co comment about the column on the corner, what occurred to me is, that, especially talking about scale that you brought up, Michael, perhaps it doesn't want to have a, a base. That if, if you take the base, and, you know, the big pedestal that's underneath mm -hmm. it, if you take that pedestal out, it may give you a chance to get that column more in scale. Just, it was just a hit. Um, I, 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 I'm sometimes not always in agreement. I, I actually don't think this is too modern for this area that is functioning as um, on that one element. So that's the only comment I think I disagree with. I do agree with the centering and things like that. But I feel like given the basket weave of the trellis that's going to go over it and everything else, I think it would fit within the language. But that's only one voice. So <laughs> that's all I'll share. OK, <clears throat> okay any other comments? I'll quickly sum up here as I uh, again, quickly wrote, the uh, large State Street Arch is not working yet. The restaurant corner needs some work with the column, maybe eliminating the base and possibly with an obelisk or some element at the very corner to accentuate that. The Mason Street Arch needs to work with the rest of that corner building meaning mm -hmm. all of that. Either it's Moorish or it's not, or it's Spanish or it's not, and so forth. Um, there's differing opinions on whether or not the, the contemporary glass facing Mason Street is, needs some work. Uh, but it definitely has to relate to the hotel entry. Something's got to be mm -hmm. done to uh, juxtapose one or the other to work together, and that may be your solution mm -hmm. for that, mm -hmm. the cont overly contemporary look there. Uh, the axes of uh, the two gardens, uh, two landscaped area, need to uh, interact better and work as two, uh, as one rather than two. The square lawn is too contemporary. And uh, you must continue to work together to relate them to each other as well as to the buildings that appear around them. And the street tree along State Street, street trees need to be loosened up and not compete with the LE. And there's positive comments about the OE, too. So, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, yes. one, one addition, the, 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 the contemporary design of, of, the, um, uh, of, of the square lawn and stairs, if you could add and stairs. All right. Comment, please. To make a motion for a two-week continuance. Is there a second? Second. With Any comments. further discussion? All in favor of the two-week continuance, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's only five after five. The, uh, my reason for breaking, breaking A and B 